Welcome to Snowskate Overlords, the most authoritative podcast in snow skating. I'm Eric Frick here with Andrew Nelson, professional snow skater Zach Al Warden, and the owner of Ambition Snow Skates, Alex Blay, back for a second round of uh, Snow Skate Overlords. How's it going, Mr. Boss Lord? I'm doing good. How are you guys? Doing good, man. Can't good. complain. Can't complain. How are you uh, feeling now that the Bleach Project is done and all of these segments <laughs> are out? I feel relieved, man. It was a lot of work. I think this year, uh, you know, we're having an amazing year, but it also comes with more work and more time involved. So it was kind of stressful having the episodes, which, you know, I really do care when I work on these projects. I want to make them good and I want to, you know, I want the writers to be hyped and it's a lot of pressure. So combined with like feeling like I don't have enough time and then everyone's like they want it to come out like it was hard. But, you know, I'm super hyped there out now and. I'm already filming for more. So it's just, it's just like an endless, I'm like, <laughs> they're out now, but I'm just filming. So it's going to happen again. But for, for now, I can chill a little bit. <laughs> for sure. For sure. And I want to talk to you about your approach in making the Bleach series as it relates to past videos, uh, why you decided to put it out in the episode format that you did. Um, and then I will, the social media portion of that and putting clips on social media, that will be my next question, but at least okay. in terms of producing, you know, full length videos, whatever those may be at this point, um, how did you decide on the format that you ended up with for bleached? Uh, yeah, I think it was mainly discussing with everyone too. Like it wasn't just me that decided like, that's how it's going to be, but talking with the mm -hmm. team, but overall, like, I think what influenced it the most is, you know, we do have quite a bit you know, we have many full lengths or, you know, in the same format. And I was like, could we try something different? I also know with snow skating, you know, if you're, you know, the diehard snow skate fans, whoever's like watching this podcast are going to watch the whole thing, even if it's like 30 minutes. But, you know, uh, I'm not sure if the general public is going to, you know, watch the whole thing. So for me, I was thinking if we can maybe split it into episodes, which I wasn't sure if it was going to be three or four episodes, but Regardless, I figured we could maybe give more shine or spotlight to the writers. Um, and even maybe it's easier to share in the sense that like what we did is we kind of grouped people together, especially, you know, we weren't usually we try and travel and film and get everyone together, which we couldn't do in the last two years. So it mm -hmm. was more like me in Quebec filming the boys and then, you know, uh, Red filming with the boys in the U.S. So it just felt like they came together a bit more naturally that way, separate, separating the footage. And beyond that, I just felt like, you know, if I get like, for example, episode one was the Quebec up and comers and they're all friends. So I figure like their friends are going to be hyped to share and watch the whole thing. So kind of create a buzz around that. So I think that really worked. And um, the episodes, I mean, had, they had a different, I, I wish I was hyped. People pointed that out. They noticed like every episode kind of had its own uh, vision or format in a way. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought that was sick. Cause I heard, I think you guys in the previous podcast actually talking about it. And I had people tell me like, Oh, that's sick. Like I really like how it, each, you know, each of them was different and I tried to fit them with whoever the writers were. So it was fun to, you know, it's just a bit more creative that way. And I think it gave more shine to the writers and maybe also helped spread the content throughout the season a bit, a bit later than I was expected, but I was expecting, but they're out. And I was like, it can't come out in February. So it's like January 30th or 31st. <laughs> I'm not sure <laughs> it's going to come out, but yeah, it, it was really fun. And that, I think that's the main, just like get everyone more spotlight on their footage. And also when we repost Instagram, you know, it can kind of help spread it out instead of like, here's everything. And then, you know, repost for a month and a half, the stuff people have already seen. Totally. Yeah. Um, I have a question real quick before we keep going. Um, in the past, we had talked about, you know, combining all of it to make a full length. Have you, have you uh, rethought that now that everything kind of is so different? Do you think you'll still take all three episodes and mix, miss, I don't know you say like mix and match them and yeah. make a full length still, or do you think it would be like everything feels so different? It couldn't feel cohesive as a full length. I think it could feel cohesive. It's more, you know, I know the writers from the team pointed that out that I think everyone has that nostalgia of like a full length and also gives it more, maybe a rewatch value in the sense where maybe in five years you want to watch it, just click on one video, watch the whole thing. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. is it something that's going to go viral or get views? Probably <laughs> not. You know, it's, 
it's yeah. just for the snow skate fans to, you know, when we go back to it in the future, uh, just watch one video. And I think maybe it also give it a rewatch value in a sense where, um, you know, if it comes out as one, I'm sure everyone's going to rewatch just th that one and mm -hmm. give that footage a second because not everyone looks at it 50 times like Eric. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I I'm glad you still want to do that. I still would love totally. to see yeah. it all put together too. So. Plus with the credits, because we're going to add credits. So I think that's oh, going to be cool because there's some interesting nice. footage there. It's going to be Heck a little yeah. bonus section at the end where, you know, extra stuff. And obviously we're going to do B-sides. So, yes. you know, when you're asking like, oh, how do you feel now it's done? It's like, well, it's done, but, you know, there's still a lot. So oh, yeah. It doesn't feel as like time sensitive, which I think almost made me, uh, it's weird to say, but almost made it harder. And I was like, feeling the pressure made it hard to edit. I feel like editing is somewhat creative, you know, it's an it's somewhat of an art form. It's not just like mm -hmm. do this work. And sometimes yeah. when you're like, Oh, you have to do this right now. And it's like, Oh, I don't know. I just, I want to do it. Like when I edit, sometimes I'll edit for hours and everything just works. Sometimes I'll edit for 15 minutes cause it's not working. But then when you feel like I have to sit down and do this, it just makes it so like, I don't know. It just makes it so much harder for me. So. Yeah, yeah, probably doesn't but, doesn't help when I'm in your ear every day. Like, hey, man, is that video coming out like, <laughs> twice a week? Person, everyone's like messaging me. So <laughs> how's it coming along? I'm like, even if I tell you, like, it's not going to come. I know everyone's <laughs> hype, so I understand. And I always try to like answer. But everyone, every time I'm like, I'm trying my best, man. <laughs> it just adds pressure. But I wasn't like bummed at anyone asking. I just know everyone wants it to come out so bad. And. Yeah. Everyone's put so much work, like it's two years of footage. So it, it's hard because you want the the writers to be happy and like, because what's that hard work if it comes out with like, you know, in a way you, you don't appreciate and it's why would you do it again? So that's something that I really try to respect the writers and, you know, so that's if it, it episode one was easier because I just did whatever I wanted because those guys are just so hyped. Like they want to be in the video and they're like, yes we're in the video so it's like <laughs> i don't even need to like i just choose music and do whatever i want and they're super hype but then someone's been on the team for 10 years and i feel like <laughs> oh i really got to make sure this is how they want it so but it's i think in the end it's all good and it makes for a great result and i've read a lot of comments on youtube people saying like this is the best the best series like the best snow skating videos and it's like wow that's awesome like i don't know are they the best i don't know like there's we i think we have plenty of really good ones but i thought they were different and maybe that's why you know i'm hyped yeah. on them it was a lot of pressure but i'm really happy with how they came out and i think most people are too so yeah i found the series very refreshing compared to like the traditional full lengths we've been doing now that there's anything wrong with those two i love those but this was a cool approach and i really really liked it cool well thank you man you're a big part of this success so <laughs> episode three yeah. It. and then just me always calling zach like hey what do you, do you think we should do in montage you think we should just i'm always asking for like advice so zach has been getting a lot of questions from me so <laughs> you were i feel like zach and phil moreau are really involved in like whenever i'm like not too sure about something i'll just give him a call dude like, i love that a little bit i love the so, uh talk shop so it's fun for me it's not <laughs> like ever like oh don't feel like you're ever burdening me i love to talk about it <laughs> Cool. I try and call Eric sometimes, but whenever we call with Eric, we start talking for like an hour. So sometimes I'm like, I can't ask Eric because then I'm too busy. We can't do <laughs> yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, it can turn into a pretty long forever. conversation. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we almost need to like plan it out like this or something, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to talk about music selection for a second. Um, because yep. the music selection varied over the the three episodes and, you know, very, very different styles, right? Like a lot of, uh, you know, call it old timey music in the episode uh, or the third episode. And, you know, I was surprised at first and that was like not something that I would have guessed, but it worked super, super well. So how do you like, how do you come across a lot of this music and how do you ultimately decide, hey, this is what I want to use for this video project? Yeah, so I really wanted the music to reflect the different groups in a way and also kind of create a separation between like all the episodes to feel a bit different. So mm -hmm. episode one was a bit more like trendy, you know, younger writers. They were all like really talent talented skateboarders. So I felt like let's try and make this, you know, not that it's like super trendy skating style, but a bit more modern in that way. Like 
So that's how I went about it. A uh, bit more like hip hop style. And, and then with Raph, Raph likes epic stuff. Like I know he likes when, you know, he wanted it to be epic. So I just, I found some music. Sometimes I, I, when I, whenever I drive around, I just listen to music and I save stuff that I like. And like the song I use for his second, the second half of his part is something I've, I've had for years, you know, and that happens sometimes where I have a song that I like and it never works, but then it ends up working on something. So for that project, it's like, oh, like it fits. It's a French song too. And he's from Belgium and that's really close to France. I don't know. I thought it was cool to have that on there. So episode one, that was the thinking. And then episode two was more... I had the writers involved a bit more in the sense I wanted like, you know, Phil's been on the team for so long. Like I want to, I want to make sure he likes the song. So he sent over maybe 10 songs and I went with the one that I liked best, but I really feel like his song, it just felt like Phil, you know, it just worked mm -hmm. and also had that good vibe, which I wanted to, you know, like you always say in the podcast too, like whenever Phil snow skating, he's just happy, smiling, having a good time. So I wanted the song to have a good vibe and be able to integrate these shots of, you know, in the start, he starts laughing, whatever. And that's just feel how he rides and just like arms in the air when he lands, <laughs> you know, get a little bit of personality in there. So the song I think mm -hmm. needs to match the writer and Jensen's song too. He sent it in like, it was pretty uh, like a change of pace in the video, but yeah, he's been asking to use that song for a while. And I was like, I just want to, I want him to be hyped because I thought that was a really, really good part he put out. And we filmed on that for, he, he stayed in my house for at least a month. And then the year after uh, he, he came back uh, for maybe another month. So we spent a lot of time together working on that. And I, was, I wanted him to be hyped. So that was his song choice. And then Charlo, I, I told him like, do you trust me? He's like, yeah, I trust you. It's like, okay, I got this song. You know, it, it is, we, we had used it or not the exact same version, but in the first street life that my cousin made, Gui. Mm -hmm. It was like the intro with um with the rapping, whatever, a freestyling, but it was just like another version. I, I found that this summer, just like the they mm. sampled that song for whatever hip hop beat was using that. And I really liked the original song and I thought it was like kind of funky and like it's Charlo's like super smooth writing. I don't know. I thought it felt it, it fitted really well. So that was my choice on that one. But in episode two, I really wanted to fit with the writers as much as I could, you know, and the um, Josh is another song that I had for a while. And Josh is always like, he just trusts me. So he's like, yeah, whatever you want to do. But I know he really liked, that's his style. So we didn't really do anything different. It was more like, I think episode two was more like the traditional ambition, you know, video. Yeah, I felt Which that I too. It was cool yep. because it was kind of like the OG writers in a way. So mm -hmm. yeah, it just yeah. felt like a little mini full length. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then the third episode, Zach had picked out his song, which is called Bleach, and that's how we got the name for the video, actually. <laughs> but so that song was really tight. But then I didn't want to go from that to like, you know, I I I felt like it needed, to be yeah, cohesive. And I thought that second song too, because we have like a lot of friend clips, whatever, in the second song, and I wanted something fast paced to you know keep the energy. And then uh, starting with Robbie Polly, which he had amazing footage. Mm -hmm. I thought that just really set the tone because Zach's part was obviously like a major part, you know, a major segment of that video. And then I didn't want, I didn't want it to like kind of go down after that. I wanted it to be like, okay, like this is going to keep going strong. So having that song and that's actually Stefani sent me that song. Mm. Stefani has been uh, messaging me, messaging me quite a bit more lately and uh -oh. so hyped and being like, Oh, <laughs> we need to, uh, you guys need to make those snow skate tips. And I'm like, I know, dude, I'm on it. I've been trying for four years, but he's like, <laughs> he typed, he typed a whole document of like, here's what you need to say. Like, hi, this is Blaine. I was like, he typed it all the whole thing. Like, as if like the text wow. it, that I would read, and I'm like, dude, that's tight because we're actually working on that. And it's like, I use some of the stuff that he sent over. And I've, I just noticed he's like so hyped and he's like, here's a folder of like 60 songs that I think are really tight. But I, but I just don't, I don't edit anymore. And I was like, dude, I'll take it for sure. So that second song is actually from one of, he was one of his songs. Wow. And I didn't know he was, another one. Yeah, I, I didn't know he paid that much attention still. Oh yeah. yeah he crazy. loved it, man. I love yeah. that. Yeah. So he said that. So I was like, I thought it was cool also to use something for, from Stefani, you know, yeah, definitely. The influence he's had over ambition, the snow skating, but also all our snow skate content. And I thought it just fit well. So it wasn't like, I just wanted to, it to feel cohesive in that sense. And I think then going, Dave wanted, like we chose the song, me and Dave, like 
he sent me a few things. And so the song, the last part was slowing down quite a bit. So I wanted to progressively slow down in the video, you know, where it started kind of mm -hmm. fast paced. And then when Eric, I think, what, or Nate, well, actually, here's, that's something interesting. Uh, Nate LaJoy's part, Nick LaJoy, I'm not even sure if it's. His name. name's Nick, actually. Yeah, everyone just thinks his name is. Yeah, he, he I mean, it's his nickname, Nate, but right? his name is Nick. I know. Yeah. So his song, he actually, like, he made that soundtrack. Oh. So he, like, remixed some stuff and he made that. And I was like, I've heard it before. I think he sent me, like, a preview of his snow skate footage. I was like, oh, that song is tight. Like, what's that song? And he's like, oh, I made that. I was like, what? So he just sent me, like, the <laughs> audio file. So I, I thought it was good because it kind of, he goes from like a fast pace to him falling on his face. I and love that. that that's my so favorite. Yeah. That's my favorite part in the whole video is the abrupt like change in the fast yeah. song to like that slam just, you know, cuts to it so well. I love mm -hmm. that. Thank you. I'm glad you liked it. So that, that was like a way to, I'm trying to do that more with videos now, like kind of change songs more. Yeah. More, mm -hmm. you know, less like fade out of a song and then play a rock clip and then start a new song. Just trying to like change it kind of abruptly. Sometimes you, some more some songs gonna work when you do that, do that. Sometimes you just can't really do it. But that I think that worked pretty well. And yeah, progressively I wanted to slow down the music for when Dave's clips, you know, come on his stuff, like trying to really like you know let the run ups and landings go slower and give it more time and just to appreciate the style, you know. So mm -hmm. that's the I guess that's pretty much. A complete um, assessment of the music in Bleach right there. <laughs> well, yeah, the attention to detail really shows. Like, I, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm glad that Nick slammed like that so we could uh, change up the music, you know, change <laughs> yeah, up the music exactly. so <laughs> abruptly. From, I love that. From what I know, or I'm pretty sure he actually landed it and then he wanted to do it again, I think. And that's when he slammed. Okay. So Classic. that's a bummer when that happens. But <laughs> yeah. in this case, it didn't make the video. So yeah <laughs> thanks for your <laughs> sacrifice nick yeah. <laughs> um the social media portion of this um so let's use dan as an example dan had two clips in the video and over the last two years he's been doing his thing by posting his footage directly to instagram and he's been killing it i mean it's been working i'm sure it's great for you know you and your social channels alex um, and he's gotten a ton more followers as a result, and he's getting a lot of respect in snow skating for doing that. But um, if you do that full time, of course, you can't, you know, also, you know, put out a full, a full part in the full length too, right? Um, so, what are your thoughts on, like, if you had a crystal ball, what do you see these videos looking like in five years from now? And no, I'm not going to hold you to this, but like, are you going to see? Are you expecting and wanting more of the team to put stuff directly to social media, or do you want them to continue to kind of hold footage and basically do what you want with it whenever it's time to release it? Or what do you think the future is going to hold? That's a really good question and something I th I think about daily. On the fact that Dan is doing that, I think it's amazing because I feel like for him maybe is it because it's like less pressure he just seems to have a good time and he just seems to perform even better when he does that like he snow skates really good and i don't know maybe when he's filming like what for a video he's maybe trying too hard but dan is so good and his style is so good that like even if he does like a little bit simpler trick it actually i think it's even more interesting so maybe i don't know why for him it just works that well but regardless when he started doing that i think it was like last year was kind of like doing that more heavily. And I was like, dude, this is really good. Like, and I've, I think for years we've known, and I even, even told the team, like when you guys like do Instagram edits like that, like you maybe have like 10 times, sometimes you may have 10 times the impact that you would have getting that clip in a video, like, especially in like a 40 minute video, like where there's so much footage. Like, so I, I think what I would say is, I think it's going to be the same in five years. Uh, it just depends on the writers. I, and I may have a preference, but I don't want to impose that on anyone. I feel like if if Zach wants to go snow skate, like and film a part like he did last year and put his, you know, all into it, then as a company, we're going to bag that and try to, you know, get it on the barracks and get it seen. And But if Zach wants to do fun stuff and film with his phone, I think it's just as much value to the brand. And uh if I were to say like, oh no, you're, you know, you shouldn't be doing that. Then it's like, well, you know, we're just snow skating. It's, it's for the fun of it. And 
you know, I don't really have, I, I feel like with the years, I don't even really have expectations for anyone. It's just like, do whatever you want to do. And I think the group that we have of team riders is they've proven, you know, their part. And then in, in the sense, like everyone's so talented that whatever they do is going to bring value. And I think if you have a good time doing it and you're doing what you want. So I think there's going to be riders like, for example, Morgan, that's, uh, you know, one of our upcoming writers who just got on the team, Morgan, he really wants to film like clips, me filming like fisheye and all that film apart. So if that's what motivates him and gets him to do like tricks that no one else has ever done, or, you know, just progress, progress snow skating as much as possible, then I'm all for that. And I'm going to go film in the blistering cold, like I'm down, <laughs> but worst job you know, in the world. You know, and if someone mm. wants to go and film Instagram, like Instagram has huge, huge value by bringing more content. So, you know, is it going to be different in five years? I don't, I don't really think so because I feel like some writers are going to be at their phase where they want to film, like, you know, show what they can do and kind of prove their, that they belong to the team or whatever. And yeah, I do have an opinion on that, but I don't, I don't want to like put that on anyone. I just want sure. people to do whatever they want. So. It's yeah. really, it's really reassuring to hear that someone like Morgan, who we could say is one of the youngest dudes on the team right now, still wants to go out and do uh, an old fashioned part, if you will. That's like awesome to me. Cause obviously we all grew up on that kind of stuff and we're kind of wondering, I feel like maybe I'm just speaking for myself here, if that's going to be lost on future generations. So it's really cool to hear that he still wants to go out and do that and understands yeah. like the impact of filming a part like that still where it is so easy for everyone who is talented as him or Raph to just go put stuff on Instagram, you know, cause it is an easy outlet. And I, I mean, I'm guilty of it too. It's so easy just to kind of go out and do something a little easier, a little more fun and have the instant gratification or understand that it makes a large impact, maybe even larger than the clips that I just spent two years filming. You know what I mean? So I'm glad yeah. to hear that they still appreciate that. I think, I think there's always going to be writers that want to do that because that's what, you know, that's what gets you on the bigger platforms or even now we're getting more, uh, you know, snow skating is just getting more seen, more out there, like the barracks posting all these clips and like, they've got that interview. Like, I, th I think if you're a younger writer and you're killing it, like that's, you want to be in the video, you know, you, yeah. don't, you don't just want to mm -hmm. be reposted, but. Right. The thing is, it's like with the every year, you know, time passing by, I feel like the videos, we're not looking to make like a 15 minute video. Like, so it, the quality kind of has to like always go up and up and up. So I, I'm not too concerned in the sense that I think there's always going to be people filming, but I don't, I wouldn't mind if the videos were like eight minutes, you know, it doesn't really need, you know, it, we just need new stuff every year of people pushing it, but it doesn't need to be like super long. So that's why I'm like, if people want to film for Instagram, that's fine. Whoever wants to film a part is going to film a part. And it doesn't, even if it's a bit less people, like I, I don't think that's a bad thing, but you know, if everyone wants to film Instagram, I'm, I'm sure there's just as much value in doing that for <laughs> the brand and even for snow skating, because you post a reel and like how many people see that? Like you, you probably right. have a bunch of kids that will never watch the full length. Like, I think the full length is marketing more towards like the industry. Like when we put out a full length, we have a bunch of new skate shops that want snow skates. And then uh, we'll have just like pro skaters be hyped on it, whatever. But like the younger audience, I'm sure they're hyped on it, but maybe a lot of them don't even like, they don't even understand or they just see the reel on Instagram and that's what they like. And we're not going to kid ourselves. Like we sell to obviously a pretty young demographic. So I don't know it, I, when you said, I think in the question, you're like, Oh, is it good for you? And I'm like, it's not good for me. It's good for snow skating, you know, like, yeah, mm -hmm. obviously like with the brand, I think it's good for everyone involved, but I think it's just a matter of let's get snow skating seen by as many people as possible. And Instagram is an amazing outlet and even TikTok now that we're on. So for everyone watching, <laughs> go on TikTok. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, that's just the younger audience. And for them, obviously, having like phone clips is just more relatable. Like the whole phone filming is, you know, people see it and they feel like, oh, like that's they're just having a good time. And I think snow skating, as much as we want to do like the big rails and all that, which I think is a big part of snow skating and progressing it. 
maybe for a few years, maybe we had forgotten like snow skating is about just having fun and going out with your friends and also the spot creative creativity where you can just kind of use whatever and make it a spot. And uh, I think with the Instagram clips that kind of highlights that you just go out in the city and like find something and it doesn't need to be like, you know, we ha we've had many rules I feel in, a, in the past for a while. It's like this skateboard applying skateboarding rules to snow skating, which, you know, maybe it's cool for making a particular type of video, but I, I think with Instagram, it's just fun. You can do whatever, have a good time. And people buying snow skate, they just want to have fun with their friends. So we got to yeah. portray that. And that was something that yep. I really wanted to, for two years, I'm like, we got to like, it's just as important. We need to progress it and do like the more legit, you know, skateboarding ish tricks or it'd be snowboarding, but you know what I mean? But then it's like, People just want to have a good time. So we got to do that too. So, yeah, I think in the end of the day, it's good that we cover all the bases because people really like relatable content. I mean, you, uh, there's a reason why things like revive are so successful as they are, because people can relate to it definitely for all the different, you know, the spectrum of skaters out there. Some are just kind of taking it less seriously. Some are pushing themselves really far. And I think we do a good job, at least trying to cover all that where, you know, they could be the craziest trick of Dave hitting the gnarliest handrail progressing the sport, or it could be a backyard setup that people really like because that's what they're going to be doing with their boards. So I think as long as we're always mindful of those things, we'll be okay. Yeah. It's really just different segments of the marketing where it's not just like one thing. And obviously I think the success of the brand has always been based on like the video showing like, Oh, snow skates work, you know, and that's <laughs> why we're like, we want people to redo their tricks eight times. So we make it. Seem yep. <laughs> But I'm kidding. But, you know, we want people to ride away and like straight and all that. But I think that's always been our, our approach. But at the same time, like at this point, we want to keep progressing it. But if someone still doesn't like, you know, if they see a video of Josh and they think it's lame, then it's like they're never going to like going to like it. You know, mm -hmm. and I don't even see like there's no more. There's barely any hate. Like when back when we started snow skating would get so much hate. Mm -hmm. but now it's like people are just they love it and they're like that's awesome like how could he lock like that and then <laughs> occasionally maybe someone's going to be not liking it but usually like the barracks would not post us before like not at all you know they it was not even like their reputation was like you know they're concerned what are people going to say if we post a snow skate clip and now it's like whenever they post a snow skate clip they get more engagement than on their skating clips so it's like it's just insane to see how far we've come. And like when we, or when I started ambition back in the days, like we would go to skate shops and they were pretty much laughing at us and be like, you know, snow skates are lame. They don't sell. And I'm like, no, it's just because they haven't been like portrayed in the right way. So, you know, our videos are super important in that sense. And I think it's a big part of our identity as a brand, but that's just, it's not the, all there is to it. So that's why I feel Instagram is a really good, or not even Instagram, but just like social media type content. So sorry for the long answer, boys. I think about no, this no, all, that's the time, great. all the time. No, I mean, <laughs> it's important stuff. Yeah, it is. Totally. Um, I, we do need to start breaking down footage, but I want to talk about how that partnership with the barracks came, uh, came about. Um, was that something that you guys had been working on uh, prior to the release of the video? And was that planned like your guys' collaboration or what was going on there? I'm trying to think. I think last year, last year when Dave put out his Sola Fide part, Sola mm -hmm. Fide or Sola Fide, Sola Fide, I think he called mm -hmm. it. How you say it. Um, he's like, oh, I know someone at the barracks. Uh, he's like, maybe they would be down to post it. So I was like, hey, that'd be cool. I, you know, we could try. Like they've never wanted to in the past, but I felt like, you know, that part. I, I mean, it was a really, really good part. So I was like, I mm -hmm. don't see how they could not want to post that. So and it's as close to skateboarding as snow skating gets when Dave rides right. snow skate too. So yeah, plus like Dave rides for Sovereign, which I'm pretty sure is affiliated with the Barracks, like for skateboarding. Okay. So there's like ties there, and it's it's it felt like oh, I think Dave is a good person to like you know have the Barracks kind of open up to snow skating with. So uh, we reached out, and they were they really liked it. And I remember Chase, Chase Gabor was like the filmer at the barracks. Like he saw it and he's like, this is, and I'm not sure he had ever paid attention to our videos before, you know, but that one he watched and he's like, whoa, like this is really good. And he also, 
you know, I was hyped. He said he really liked the filming and all that. He like, he's like, this is really like close to skateboarding. So he was all like super down with it. So that kind of opened up the relationship where there's like, oh, we're going to post this and see how it does. And then it did like insanely good. Like they, they couldn't believe how good it did on Instagram, but also on YouTube where it got like 200 something thousand views and so quick. So, you know, a lot more than a lot of their skating. So they're like, oh, there's something there. People like this. Um, so that kind of opened up the conversation. And then this year I was like, what are we going to do? And I was like, I don't think we want them to necessarily like release the bleach episodes, but maybe just like help us promote them with like, uh, when we choose some key clips that we want people to see, you know? So yeah, it's been pretty like, they, they just love it and they're, they're super nice and they're trying to help. And it's, it's awesome. Like I said, coming from people would pretty pretty much hate on us to now like they're down to help and get the word out and because obviously their viewers enjoy it which that's something Mm -hmm. that you know i I really i love that people love watching the clips that we you know we go out and do all this stuff so i think we've always seen how cool snow skating is but then we were like why don't other people see it like it makes no sense (laughs) why why are we only ones that see that it's cool but maybe it just wasn't there yet you know for us we thought it was amazing but I think now we reached a point where it's like we can present it in the way that we envision it. And like people are good and like the, the, the skill level is up there where now it's like it's undeniable that it's like interesting. So when we were kids, we we're like, oh, why doesn't people why don't anyone like like this? But me, like I was in Sherbrooke, like the only kid snow skating. And everyone was like, this is lame. And I'm like, no, it's not lame. But maybe I saw it in a different way. Sometimes if like everyone says something is lame. It's probably lame. You know, like that's just what it is, but we need to, I think we needed to work our way up. It took more time than I expected, but if, if like almost everyone hates something like you got to change what you're doing. And I think we just progressed in our way up. And then the barracks, having the barracks be so open to it is, I mean, it's huge for us as a brand. And I think just for snow skating in general, you know, for sure, for sure. Yeah, especially for like a guy like me getting tagged in a comment, like the barracks has mentioned you in a con. It's like, whoa, that is an insane notification to get, you know, <laughs> pretty wild. <laughs> Doubled your followers, didn't it? Uh, no, no. It didn't. no. I'm kidding. I was surprised cool. by that. I thought we'd get more of a push too. And <laughs> People think it's like, oh, if you get like reposted by Tony Hawk, you're going to be famous. It's just, see, nope. I, I kind of see that with the younger generations are like, if I can like get you know mentioned by a big name i'm gonna make it like it's not (laughs) it's a repetitive thing like you need to always be doing things right and like you know it's just you know we got mentioned by tony hawk and i think it was 2014 and yeah i remember that it was a push but it's not like we made it you know we're you know (laughs) it's just someone mentioned you like when, when you go on Instagram, you click on everyone that's tagged. Like you just watch the clip, you like it and you move on. So yeah, I exactly. think it's just general awareness where it's like, if you appear in different, you know, if you're watching your phone and then snow skinning pops up like a few times in different, you know, different users, you follow, whatever, then you kind of start having interest, but it's not just like a one time. Oh, like we're famous now, you know, that's not how it goes. <laughs> I remember that moment too. We were like celebrating. We're like, oh my God, like we made it. And then we're like, (laughs) and here we are today. Like, have we still made it? I don't know. (laughs) I think it's, it's really a long run thing, but it's not even about making it or not. I think, you know, if, if you go back to, at least I'll speak for myself. If I go back to when I started snow skating or even when I started ambition, like to, to be where we are right now, is completely mind-blowing honestly even like Mm. to be where we are right now compared to like four years ago is mind-blowing too so it's like when i started i remember i won't like give numbers but like i was like if i can sell x amount of snow skates a year like my life will be complete you know my dream will become (laughs) true or whatever but we reached that point pretty quick and now we're like way beyond that which was almost kind of weird at first it's like oh like you know you're you're a kid you have a dream and your dream is like you're 22 and it's already like oh here's my life's dream is already done like <laughs> what am i gonna do now <laughs> you know and it's was hard to kind of see further than that see past yeah. that it's like well this it's already what i wanted like so we just keep doing it but 
and also felt like how are we going to go further and i didn't really know it's like we'll just keep doing what we do i guess but yeah i don't know i don't want to snow just, skating i love snow skating guys i love i was it. gonna say just for reference uh blay how old were you when you started ambition because this was 2004 14 years old man. 14 yeah yeah but Insane. it was just like clothing it was like right i was like oh there's no like snow skate related brand there's only premier selling snow skates so i was like oh we should make like because the the foam on the premier boards was pretty bad like the foam ripper <laughs> practically plastic really, really bad <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you know i was like oh we could sell like a softer foam for people who are more into it because the soft which was fs grip at that time but yep mm-hmm so I was like, oh, we should just sell like accessories and like shirts. And, you know, it's cool to wear a shirt that says snow skating when you're like 15 and you're hyped on snow skating. It's like this weird yeah. thing only you do, you know? So mm-hmm. that was kind of the idea. And then getting a bit older, I think it was even like a teacher in class that was like, why don't you make snow skates? And I was like, oh, we can't. Like Premiere makes them. And I was like, wait, we can make snow skates too. <laughs> like that's how, I don't know. So that's kind of how it came together where started researching the whole how to make boards and whatnot but the the brand started in 2014 and we started selling snow skates in 2000 well 2000 uh oh my bad 2004 we started the brand my bad and then Mm -hmm. 2007 08 is when we started selling the first snow skates so the few years before that was like more research and yeah so I don't, I think we're off topic here, boys. Yeah, sorry. I say I have so much to go off of right now, but I probably shouldn't even say or ask yeah. these things. So I won't. Let's move to the, to today's topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's start breaking down footage from uh, Bleach episode three. But first, let's take a Zoom break. All right, we are back, ready to break down some Bleach footage. So first part, Zach, you can... Uh, tap out of this discussion if you like, but please be ready and willing to answer any questions that we have for you. But overall, man, you, I, I got to call you out here for a second, Zach, because you undersold the shit out of your footage. Your part was amazing. And there were some awesome clips in there. You made it sound like no big deal going up to it. So you were incorrect on that one, dog. Footage was how, how am I supposed to present myself? Like, do wait till you see what I have coming. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't you're supposed like, to say, God, I'm so fucking sick. Can't, like, but- <laughs> but for me i i also have to understand i mean i can't be delusional i have to look at riders like like dave and josh and, and raf you know and morgan it's like i look at these dudes and i'm like these dudes are fucking incredible you know and i might have my own lane of snow skater or at least i'm trying to adapt towards that because i mean i'm almost 30 here but i i mean like i i'm i can't be I can't objectively say like, oh man my part's like really good when i see riders like that so it's like you know i'm just trying my best really Totally. And no, I'm mostly own. giving you a hard time, but at the same time, I know, I know you, you are, made it sound but... like not that big of a deal. And your part came out. And we're just like, like that was incredible. Um, mm. so, you so ask, cool. you know, <laughs> it does, you know, you know, some people prefer a certain type of riding really depends, you know, maybe I'm a snow skaters, snow skater. So yeah, <laughs> that, that's maybe a good way to put it. That's kind of some of the notes I had on your part. I mean, first of all, super, super dense. I mean, thick with three C's at least. I mean, a lot of little clips. <laughs> yes. It was best I compliment thought, yet. <laughs> very raw. You had a lot of, um, you had a lot of just really fun tricks. And that was kind of really my overall impression uh, on the video as a whole. I really liked the uh, range of different uh, video formats using different cameras. Um, the whole thing just seemed more raw, more slam more slams or whatever i actually had a question for blade the beginning before zach's part there's a a voice talking over the footage it's kind of warbled in the background do you know whose voice that is that's zach duicky's voice um really? he was yeah i asked him to shoot a vhs shot of that of that rail as in detroit and um that that camera is like an old uh vhs camera that my family used on family vacations growing up and they ended up scrapping it for that reason like the audio was coming through really like underwater sounding like shit and they were like all right well this camera sucks like we're getting rid of it and i thought it was broken and then i dug it out a couple years ago and i was like oh it still works and i was like i'm gonna do vhs this time around like we've done super eight so often so i really wanted to lean into the vhs feel and that's where that all began I liked it. I thought it was really cool. I liked yeah, the warble. Cool. The little analog uh, <laughs> distortion was really yeah, cool. Yeah, that was natural. I got to get right into Zach's part, the slams. I thought that was really what stuck out to me is I you had some uh, some pretty good ones. 
the first one, the uh, the gap over the the kind of ledge to ledge gap into the rail, and you <laughs> yeah. just uh, sick. That's yeah, that, <laughs> the running yeah, ball. <laughs> almost that passed was, away. <laughs> <laughs> You had a, another one just after that too, when you were kind of ollieing over that handrail at an angle. Um, or actually, no, I'm sorry, you didn't slam on that one. What I was gonna say was, your hat came down over your eyes. Oh mm. man! And I wanted to say they invented something like that. If you watch uh, <laughs> this hat, uh, man, yeah, I had OG to finally MSG. upgrade to this one because uh-huh. it was. It was losing its elasticity, dude. If you watch that part, that one is very noticeable, but it happens a lot of times in that part. I it just it. kept happening. But I know that Autumn makes like the drawstring now. Yeah, I was gonna say, Blay, you need to get on a snapback beanie or something. <laughs> what was a uh, gifted hater saying that would be trendy? You know, those like I think it was like vibe. yeah, like the vi- oh yeah. man, my my first snow skate clips on the premiere forums. I had that DC visor beanie in every clip. That's so funny. <laughs> oh five, yeah, classic, <laughs> classic. No, uh, kind of going into Zach style, just deconstruct. You mean one of my f- the foot plant wall ride mm. for sure. That was cool. That's a really hard spot to skate to. Yeah, that yeah, not as easy as it looks. That- trick was really hard because on a skateboard it's a simple trick because you have the space between your wheels and your board to grab but with the snow skate i missed a grab 100 like 90 percent of the time because mm. it's just flat against the wall so i had to learn how to like pop it off the wall to be able to even grab it and i kept just it would just flush go up the wall and i could not grab it like that trick took me i had to go back more than one time for that trick which is like embarrassing because it seems like a fun joke around trick but it was really hard and then like my ender people were like oh cool ender i'm like dude i did that like eight, like i landed it the first time on vhs like third try it wasn't a hard trick it was just a lot of setup and prep. made it the spot exactly so the great. spot is yes that's exactly what it is it's a which unique you, spot which you know what i think your whole part no, i don't want to cut you off andrew but just i just want to say if you're talking about spots i think that's kind of how you went about it differently. 100 like, percent. your spots mm-hmm. were very very uh you know you knew where, where you wanted to go or like, it wasn't just like, Oh, we're here. We're going to get a clip. You know, it's like you had the whole, oh, yeah. whole vision and it came true. And I think all the roofs and all that. And also, you know, you, being in Marquette, like, you know, there's spots, but you, you have to be a bit more creative than maybe if you live like in Montreal or whatnot. So I thought that was really cool. And that kind of made your part stand out like the spot selection. So yeah, yeah, I mean, you're it was obvious. Yeah, you're 100 percent on. I'm glad that you could pick that up. I don't know how many people do, but you've all been to Marquette at one point or another, and you know it's kind of like a a foundation for snow skating in ways. So this place has been blown out between Jeremy, Neil, Dan, myself. I mean, people that come through, even like Josh and Alan. It's hard to like go to new spots around here. It's a small city, so yeah, I was heavy on spot selection. I mean, I spent all summer looking at yeah. spots. I mean, even my Ender. I went there in the summer with Alan because he wanted to look at a different portion of the dam. I won't speak on that because he has a trick in mind. And I saw the Wally portion and I was like, wow, that'd be really cool. But I better start clearing this out right now because there's a bunch of trees and roots and rocks. So I cleared it out in the summer to go back in the winter. It was like wow. to that level of detail that I had to wow. I had to pay attention to spots for sure. So and I, I was I said this a lot while making that part. I'm like, I don't make spots look good. They're going to have to make me look good. Because I'm not as talented as some of the other snow skaters. So it was very, very spot oriented. And that's I'm glad that maybe that it came across to some people. I wanted to say, too, even the spots that maybe there's a really quick clip, even the spots that maybe weren't so glamorous. Uh, the ollie, it's the, the stairs and then you ollie over the fence and then you get a heel flip down into the curb. And I thought just for like a quick little line, just to kind of break up some of your bigger stuff, I thought that was just a really cool technical trick. You kind of throw that in there. And I just really, uh, I wasn't expecting that like little last second heel flip, but it made it feel more like a, like a skateboarder part or something. And I, I just yeah. liked, uh, there's a lot of little things that you do in there that I wanted to point out. And in, in that um, clip, um, I want to point out that that Ollie was no joke. Yeah. Um, because that was in yeah. Minneapolis and yeah, I was, I was scared was, of it. <laughs> I love Ollie and over stuff. I d- didn't even think about going over it that night. I'm like, I'm not hitting this thing. This thing's huge. This is not fun. You ollied over it a bunch of times and got that heel flip after. Um, I don't, I was trying to think, did Josh film that or me? I don't remember. And it's really uh, not important, but Josh filmed it. Um, yeah, Josh ended up filming it. And I was like, yo, I really want to get one from the back to, to emphasize like how tall of an Ollie it was. Cause like, if you yes. missed it, like you're getting smoked on it. 
Absolutely. And it really didn't come no through joke. because it, yeah, because it, yeah. And it went through, it went by so fast that you really couldn't even understand that it was like a pretty tall Ollie too, but I was yes. really afraid of that compared to some of the other things in that part, but it goes yeah. by so quickly that like, no one's going to really grasp that and that's okay. But yeah, I'm glad that you, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm glad that you're there to attest that it was not extremely mm-hmm. small. <laughs> yeah. Thing was scary looking. Mm. I no one else to... skated it. I, I, maybe no. if you guys would have, maybe you would have got something on it, but no, <laughs> no. one else skated it. No. So hopefully that. <laughs> I was there Anyways. drinking that night. I was not skating. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead, Andrew. You also shared a part with uh, Zach Dewicki. Did yeah. you decide that uh, alphabetically or did you decide <laughs> someone else? No, I just fucking love yeah. Zach. I mean, I would consider him like one of my closest friends and um, someone that just recent, like it was someone that I pretty much pushed into snow skating. And maybe he would say differently that he openly did it, but it was kind of like when I was living in Kalamazoo, he was one of my close skateboarding friends and I really pushed him into snow skating and he was just good at it. Like right out the, Mm -hmm. right out of the gate where some people, you know, they teeter on the edge of hating it, not doing it, or they're good at it, but won't do it. He was one of the homies of mine that was down. And uh, I just ended up snow skating with him. Like when we could last year, now that we live seven hours apart and I just really wanted him to have tricks in my in my in my part because i love the dude so Mm. that's just how that came about yeah going back to spot selection um one of my favorite little fun clips that you got was the the board slide it was kind of you had um it was kind of like in a on a wooden trail or something like that it was the board slide on the uh bench and then you got the shove in the down the the bank of like a, a dirt slope or something yep and I think you got the heel. Was it the heel or the kickflip? Or the front side. Uh, yeah, board side, board side like board yeah, kickflip yeah. in. Yeah, yeah. that one. Oof. That spot was hard to easy. skate. <laughs> well, it would have been not that bad, um, except for when you have a walking trail. Like Andrew said, it was literally just a trail. Everyone walks all over it, so it's just yeah. so bumpy. You can't create a good run up to it. So like, even though it looks like a small obstacle, it was so hard. And that bank was really steep. So mm. I kept slipping out or I even kept like wedging my board between the landing and the bank. It would just get mm. stuck like in the, like flex in the middle, like a bridge. Mm-hmm. So it was really tough. I had to go back actually more than once for that. And wow. people probably wouldn't recognize that either. I also hope people don't think we put that bench there. That's like a shitty thing to, no. that I was like looking at that thing and like, oh man, they probably just thought we brought a bench and put it by a bank, but that's a naturally bolted in bench on a walking trail. So I'm glad you saying that, that it was evident yeah. that it was like I a wanted to- using you ago and Steve Barra. No, I'm, I will never. Video. I'm yeah, never ever. <laughs> it doesn't look like it's a bench that you know. It looks like the spot was there. And also, fun fact is, when when Zach sends me all the footage, like I have, I think you landed that trick maybe nine times or something. Yeah, oh, wow. I landed, is, yeah, yeah. I'll, I just wanted I'll to make sure. Sh- yeah, sorry. I'll make go a ahead. Point about that after Andrew, but all right. yeah, I, I just want to make wrong. sure I was getting into the bank correctly and that it looked like. Yeah, I don't know. I'm super picky. So I thought it was great. I just wanted to point that out because, yeah, I thought that one, it'll sneak by you. And the fact that you got two tricks on it, I thought would be good to talk about because I had a feeling that that looked like a more deceptive spot than. uh... But, uh, yeah, moving on to a bigger one, Um, the big the kink to sea rail. You got the board. Oh, yeah. Another walking trail that was um, about 20 minutes outside of Marquette, like a random lookout tourist destination that my friends and I went to one day and they're like, man, this is a cool rail. And they're like, this place gets enough snow where you could probably hit it on a snow skate without making a kicker because in the summer, that thing's like over waist high. It's extremely tall. Um, but we had enough snow. Um, that was actually the first clip I ever filmed for my part even too. Mm. That was the first clip, um, two years ago. And there just happened to be enough snow where it was like, a little under waist height, but above knee height. And it just happened to work out. We went there and I board slid it within like three tries, but wasn't good enough. And then I probably spent an hour doing it correctly. One of those situations. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That was one of the bigger uh, tricks in your part for sure. One of my favorites. I just love the, just staying over. You made it look so good. Just keeping the bend, riding the, cause it's, I think it's three or four sections of, of, turn or whatever yeah there's three yeah this first one's more subtle and the second one's straight and then the last one's like the sharper one that really can be seen on film i was trying to like harness my inner alan if he was like you know (laughs) not as good at snow skating (laughs) um also one of my favorite parts the uh your propane torch made an appearance in the part yes (laughs) yeah you know you spent money on that that. needed to (laughs) needed to showcase what i was really doing out there 
there's just such bad like thaw and freeze around here and I, I was like pulling my hamstring and growing like running on like really thin ice at spots and I was like dude fuck this I'm buying a torch <laughs> I'm so over it and that was I rec- if anyone's <laughs> into snow skating as much as us for our do get one the weed torch is like 18 <laughs> bucks the propane tank a little more expensive but it's so worth it I bring it to every single spot now does it help with salt I never tried it like on like a, I never tried it on anything like that. I've only used it on ice, but okay. potentially if I wanted to just like scorch the sidewalk or yeah, some cement. Well, <laughs> I thought it was funny how you had that shot using the torch in there because it's like, it's right before you do your last trick. And obviously like it had nothing to do with that trick. It's just like Zach using a torch to show yeah. that he has a torch, but then <laughs> pretty much. well, actually it was, it, it, it corresponds to the trick that I just landed that front board oh, shove okay. on that handicap rail. If you look, it's in the background, but I, I realized I a lot of people know. when yeah, I was like kind of mm. tired of like putting the B roll right before the clip. Yeah. So I was like, maybe this one I'll use it after and then mix the VHS clip with the next B roll VHS clips. But maybe that was, cool. Okay. Whatever. Apparently that didn't, apparently people didn't gather that one, which I don't expect people to be paying that close of attention to parts. Yeah. I mean, I put it together. So probably that's why I was like, Oh, that's just Zach with a torch. But then you know, <laughs> someone watching it, you know, isn't thinking, but like, I was like, yeah, all right. <laughs> I, I definitely did want to showcase the fact that here's what we're doing to our spots yeah. to get like the amount of work we put in more yeah. often than the actual trick itself. In my case, at least. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was great. That's exactly why I wanted to bring it up. I think it it really shows uh, your dedication, creativity. I, I, and you talked about it when you got it last uh, last year. <laughs> I probably yeah. did. Yeah. I was so hyped on it. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen that. I've never heard of that even. And uh, yeah, I, I like that, you know, showing people how to do that, I think hopefully pushes the sport in the right direction. Yeah. So. A lot of snowboarders do it. So I was like, why shouldn't we? Mm. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, just uh, your ender, uh, the war I had uh, fake yeah. dropped on that the dam. I liked the way you ended your ender too, of just falling uh, flat. On the, <laughs> so yeah, I thought that was that was fine. And those are two different clips. Uh, the VHS one was filmed, like I said, like maybe third or fourth try, and then the camera died because those VHS batteries don't last at all. And then the actual landing was like maybe a half hour later, but again that spot that trick and it was not that hard it was just the prep i mean that was an untouched dam so we get there and it's just me and red uh like shoveling this thing out for at least an hour before we even get to try the or before i even get to try the trick you know so yeah and big shouts out to red for that part because he put in not so not even just like behind the scenes filming he prepped every spot with me at least like he was there shoveling like he just did so much work without him that's that that part would have never ever ever happened so big shouts out to red on that one totally. yeah i was just gonna say that shout out to red man he killed it and you know when we were talking about spots earlier i was like thinking what i like in a skate video or a snow skate video good spots good trick execution which Zach, you're always redoing your tricks because you want them to look a certain way. But I feel if, like, if your spot is good and your execution is good and your filming is good, there's it's always going to be interesting. And I felt like you guys really nailed all of those. And like, yeah. yes, trick difficulty plays part, but it's not even like I feel like a better spot with a simpler trick. That's my own preference. But a, a more interesting spot, it doesn't need to be like the craziest trick but that's just more interesting to watch than like, mm-hmm. you know, something more it, yeah. technical, not that you didn't do that, but I'm just saying for me, my preferences. So I feel like that part really, that's how it really, you know, that's what I liked about it. It, it really reaches what I like to watch. So props yeah. on that. and redoing all the tricks. Like, I think I'm just like you where I see these little details and I'm like, ah, oh, like I think when you make snow skating look that good, like you need to put in the work and people don't know how much work it takes, but it makes a huge difference in the end. So yeah. Yeah. You and, guys did amazing. Yeah. I, I'm glad you, you guys picked up on that. Cause yeah, that's a hundred percent what I was honing in on for that part was just trick selection and um, making it look clean enough to, to pass, I guess. <laughs> Anyways. Well, I'll say this, Zach, you, you named the video kind of in a roundabout way. You opened the tone, <laughs> you, opened yeah. the, you opened the video on the third episode and you set the tone, uh, really well i think that's a one thing that they don't talk about enough in skating or snow skating is that the the first part of a video 
yeah uh, it can sometimes make or break it and i thought that was just a really good way uh to kick off the rest of these riders i'm go through those unless you got anything else you got to say i mean i got yeah i want two tricks to call out um that first kickflip was nuts oh god dude that was like one that of the was... best kickflips that's ever been done on a snow skate the way it was just like pop bone caught so yeah. good i like dread thinking about that day it was new year's <laughs> of last year I was, I was hung over, I'll be honest. And, um, <laughs> red met me at that spot. Cause it was between my hometown of Gladstone and Marquette where we live and God, I did not want to do it. And we got there and I underestimated it. Cause we've looked at that spot for over 10 years. It's in the middle of nowhere. It's in a, a town of maybe like 200 people and it's an abandoned school. And I was thinking like, Oh, for sure. Like I'll Ollie it. And then I had like, I had like plans for like tray flipper, like backside flipper, like something way more. And I ollied it. And I was like clipping the last part of it. And I really underestimated how long it was. And it, to me, when we were looking at it in the clip, it didn't really translate either. Like we filmed like an Ollie on a phone first. And I was like, this doesn't even look very long. Like I'm just going to kick flip it real quick. And like, we'll go, but it's never how it goes. And I battled it for like 45 minutes. And I was I couldn't walk for a couple of days after that. Like I like I would that that was the hardest. That was probably the trick in my part that I worked for the most was that kickflip. I was like the most injured from that part from that clip more than any other clip in my part for sure. So that one, I don't ever want to experience that again. That was the hardest <laughs> kickflip I've ever done, hands nothing, down. The hardest kickflip I've beats, ever done. Nothing beats a really good kickflip though. I think I know, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, it's so and sick I like to have one like that. Yeah, and I landed it maybe two or three times before that kickflip. I just wasn't a good looking kickflip. I'd like rocket it or just like land really like zigzaggy. So when I did it, like I step off the board into the road and I'm like limping in the clip. Like I can see it. Maybe it doesn't show, but I'm like, mm. I'm like peg legging my way out into the road. <laughs> Cause I'm like so stiff and so hurt. Oh, Dang. point in a return type of thing. Like I either, I do it right now or I just, I guess I just pass away. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and then the, the circle pad nose press too. Um, mm. cause nose pressing on like a street spot on concrete and not like wood or something. That's really hard to do. And I don't know what the surface is, but it didn't look that slick. And there was a decent amount of snow on that. And even though it was like kind of a quick clip, it was a very interesting spot. Uh, and just doing that nose press through that concrete and, uh, snow, that was, I really enjoyed that clip. That's a yeah, I'm, I'm glad you, you picked that one out of the bunch because, uh, I only like that trick more for a personal from a personal perspective, because I'm so, so bad at presses, especially <laughs> nose presses that when I was able just to do a nose press on that, I was like, cool. First nose press I've ever done and a part ever. So for more, it was more like a personal win for me. So that's cool. Yeah. it's cool. And thing. I, I think it was actually like cement and then a graded like door you pick up. Cause those are like some okay. kind of sewer systems. So I think there's like a diamond plated trap door on it. So I think it goes cement to that, then cement again, like in that circle, if you will. But uh, okay. honestly, it slid just fine. It was more like I just suck at nose pressing. So I just was having a hell of a time. But that wasn't too hard of a trick. Overall, that one probably took under 20 tries, which is good for me. So <laughs> circling back real quick when Andrew was saying, like, you know, the importance of like the first part. And I feel like I'm not sure we've discussed this on the podcast before, but I feel like the first part is even more important in snow skating than it is in like a skate video because yeah. a lot of people watching they don't know if they're going to be interested they're just like curious mm-hmm. and like that's why i usually try and like when i edit the videos to get things going like really quickly you know not have like 30 seconds of people just like you know waiting around i, I like to have a really good trick and like if you look back at a lot of the ambition videos or i would say all the ambition videos over the last few years it always starts, I think it started with Let's Play, where it's like Phil's part was before the intro. But it's like, mm-hmm. you got to get yep. people hyped right away. So I try to always put really good parts. So whenever someone has a first part of a video, you should know, like, because you killed it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I really like to make sure if, if they watch this segment and it's really good and we keep their attention, they're going to keep watching. But yeah, so... Sometimes I'll even put like the best part first because I want people to, you know, so you're always thinking you want the last part, but maybe you want the first part. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, I remember last year when I sent you the edit for my part, you, you even said something along the lines of like, man, like this could maybe be Ender. And I was like, Oh God, no, like I can't, I can't be put into that kind of pressure. But I was then I think I suggested something like maybe it could be a cool first part. Not that like I thought it was an amazing part, but just like I knew it was fast paced. 
and I knew that maybe it could grab attention. I'm not saying the tricks are really good, but I think it served its purpose in its own way yeah. of being a quick, yeah. Like, I mean, all the things we just talked about. So I was like, well, maybe it could be kind of cool for newcomers to watch or anyone who wants to, it's good stimulation. I hope that's, yeah. <laughs> that was the point of the part, just fast paced and maybe stimulating. Also, like you're touching a bunch of different obstacles, like, you know, flip tricks downstairs and then rails and yeah, roof, roof gaps and whatnot. So doing all that, I think, yeah, I always try to also have like an all around, you know, all arounder start the video. So people see like, oh, you can, because a lot of people, they don't know any, anything about snow skating. It's like, oh, you can do a kickflip. Like, it's like, yeah, we've been doing that for 20 years, but <laughs> I don't know. Some people have never seen it. So I think it's cool to have someone that's doing a bunch of different things. And then I think it gets people's attention. So yeah, that part was perfect for that. And it may be the opener if we, when we make the full Ooh. length, we'll see. we'll see. Who's going to get the opener? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you guys picked up on all the details of that part. But uh, yeah, let's keep moving on. But thanks, guys. <laughs> sure. Yeah, you killed it, Zach. Best part you've, or my, the best part and my favorite part that you've ever put out. Yeah. So sick. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's my oh, favorite sorry. of mine as well. So I'm taking a breather right now. <laughs> I've been uh, really heavy, just like on the phone stuff this year. I haven't filmed one real clip, so I'm just having fun right now. So, um, Robbie yeah, Polly, Robbie yeah. Polly's, uh, yeah. I had a couple. Of, I wanted to ask right away if anyone knew what was going on with that dumpster. What he was trying to do there. What he like looked you were like there a, for that, right? Yep. So I filmed those clips. Um, well, I filmed like the B-roll clips. So that was like a grease trap outside of a, of a smoothie restaurant. And uh, we got there that day. We're like, oh, this could be cool. Like, uh, you know, it's like a plastic material. We knew it would slide good. And we got there and it was like way farther away from the than the drop than we anticipated. So we're like, well, we tried to move it by hand. And like we weren't strong enough between like the five of us to really even get it to budge. It was like full to the top with like grease. So red was like dude fuck it i'll just back into it with my car and i'm like <laughs> dude that's gonna fuck your car up like we got to do something to put a buffer there so he had a sleeping bag in the back of his car and he's like all right just like hold it there and we'll we'll back into it and see if it moves and it was just a total experimental moment that worked out and we're like oh it's perfectly aligned now <laughs> i thought uh Crazy. coming off of your part to like that little slice of life clip i thought that was a really good way just to to just make it look fun and just to like the, those kinds of goofy stuff is uh is what i really like to give the the kind of texture to the video yeah uh, the back tail and kickflip back lip on that by robbie was nuts those are <laughs> two such good tricks yeah honestly I, I thought robbie really uh you know his his segment it was short but it was up there with like you know the pro riders zach and dave like mm -hmm. you know so it was good. up there so and I'm glad you point out, Andrew, how you like that transition because when I I had I had edited Zach's part and then I started making, I was like, okay, I'll do Robbie because same similar spots and whatnot, and they clearly write together. And also, I want to have people like know this is going to still be entertaining, you know. So I had Robbie, and I was like, I think I texted Zach. I'm like, dude, this is so good. And I was like, I had just made that little segment. I was like, dude, this is good. Like Robbie having him right there with the music. Cause I was having like, not doubts, but I was like, I don't know how to, you know, move on from Zach's part. And I called Zach. I was like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing, man. And it's like, <laughs> but then like, I think half an hour later, it's like, we got it, dude. This is good. And so I was hyped on that. And Robbie really, really good clips, man. Like mm -hmm. I just really hope that we can keep getting more clips out of him, even like the Insta clips, but that he's put out this year, clearly yeah. amazing potential. And, uh, I think some of the highlights from that video, uh, Robbie is up there. So that back 50 he does yes. is incredible. Yeah. That was my yeah. opening board slide. I went there for me to like board slide that rail and we're both goofy. So it's kind of like, well, who's getting the board slide? I never thought like who's getting a different trick. Mm hmm not to mention there's a huge bush in the run-up for where I would ever try back 50. So I was at a super sharp angle because of this big bush and the way he's hopping in the back 50, he's coming at it like so perpendicular i didn't think it'd be possible but he back 50 did it before i even board slid it oh, like really? probably like 10 minutes before i even board slid it he back 50 at first i couldn't believe it yeah and it's it tall too couple, it's pretty yeah, tall it took me a couple watch throughs to like 
fully comprehend how ridiculous that back 50 was. Cause like Insane. the first pass, I was just like, Oh, that's a really good back 50. And then like, I paused and kind of did the slow-mo frame by th- frame thing when he was getting on and like, yeah, way over knee high between like knee yep. and waist high. It looked exactly like exactly where it is. On, yeah. Cutting at it perpendicular, just locking into a back 50, just yep. looked grimy all around too. And then of course he had to go super slow and then make it through all those little kind of adjustments in the rail, mm-hmm. kinks, whatever they were like, that clip was incredible. And your boy side on it was great too. Don't get me wrong. Dude, but, oh my but back 50 is insane. Out. That's nuts. Back 50 is nuts. I couldn't do it if you gave me like the next 10 years. I really couldn't. <laughs> I'm serious. I couldn't. Yeah. Yeah. It's shout cool out uh, oh, Pizza Polly on Instagram uh, is a yeah. good follow. Mm-hmm. He gets a lot of <laughs> clips out. That's all I wanted yep. to say. I had that 50 down too. play. About the 50, I just wanted to say it's, it's funny because when you guys, I think Zach sent me the footage, he had all the footage. For some reason, I was missing that land. And it's like, I, I was, you know, when, when the guys send the, photo, the footage, I just look at everything and I'm like kind of experiencing it like, oh, I hope he lands this or whatnot. And it's like, oh, he didn't land it. Bummer. That would have been so sick. And then later on, I send the footage to everyone. And I think Zach was reviewing all the YouTube because I, I do like private YouTube links. And Zach's like, oh, you're missing like the 50 that's landed. I'm like, oh, what? Like, yeah, you know. I was like, oh, that'd be so cool. Oh, my bad. That'd be so cool if he did that. And then <laughs> he did it. So I think yeah. Robbie, he's like, yeah, everything's in there. Like he didn't even, like, no, not everything's in there. Like the best trick is missing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I would highlight that. I would highlight that as I think my second favorite trick of the whole bleached episode three, the back 50. Sick. Yeah. That was a sick trick. Yeah. Um, then yeah. CC in that section too. Oh um, yeah. You got first, it. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta call um, first attention woman to that. In, uh, in an ambition video, correct, Alex? Yeah, yeah. Oh, first, yeah, first ever. And I was so tight seeing her, uh, you know, go out with Zach and Red and Dan and Jeremy go out in the snow skate. That was really cool to see, to see all the Instagram clips. But having like mm-hmm. you know proper, she's the first woman to board slide a handrail, I guess, on the snow skate too. That's, totally. I don't know. So I, I think sick. it's really cool to have more. Uh, you know, it's always just been boys in the video. It's not that we don't want girls and it's just no, no one's really shown that much interest. There's been a few over the years, but I think she was like the first one to film proper clips and probably thanks to, you know, living right by Zach and all that. But, you know, that was really cool. And I was so happy that we could showcase her. And I know you guys said she moved a bit further, right? <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. She got a little further away from us. Yeah, she's but, trying to get away from us. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't, yeah, I'm too busy pushing her to do handrails and stuff. Every time I'm with her, now she's been getting really good at front boards. Like we were skating like this little bit over knee high ledge like a couple weeks ago where she was front boarding it. And I just kept like pushing at her like, all right, front board next on a handrail. Like, come on, Cece, come on. I'm like Jamie <laughs> Thomas out here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was cool to have her in there and the board's like, like the handrail, I think, you know, is it is making history in a way. So mm-hmm. I thought that was totally. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. So stoked on those clips. Yeah. Um, she also got, I had the other one, the, uh, the, on the, uh, double little press pads that you got to trick yeah. with the, uh, the diamond plate. And then she got the, the press and the shove out. Yeah. So, we were, say. we were figuring that spot out together. Cause we were both having a lot of trouble getting to the second one. Like we'd ollie up the first one and then our feet wouldn't be positioned to even get to the second one. So we just kept like, casing it or jumping off so that spot was hard to skate in terms of if you have quick feet which i don't so (laughs) that's amazing that she was able to yeah she we were figuring that one out together for sure we skipped over uh danny and uh and jeremy jeremy which oh had a few clips but i'm I'm hyped they were in there and i thought their Mm -hmm. footage was did we skip over yeah i think they were before cc right Mm -hmm. yep they were okay a lot of people in that video but Danny's gnarly heel. I think that, that was, was a really cool. That one. is gnarly. That drop doesn't look that big, but because you land in a downhill slant, the farther you gap out, the bigger of a drop it is. So by the time he's like landing on the gnarly heel, it's like almost like chin height. It's a tall drop. I was over it immediately. Oh yeah. <laughs> and he just yeah, got and then, yeah. gnarly heel. Like, we that's don't a, see that often. And then yeah. Jeremy gnarly backside flip. So two gnarly mm-hmm. tricks pretty close. That you that know, was cool. How many times yeah. have we seen the gnarly backside flip? Not that many times so yeah he's good at that stuff so that was sick to have you know that trick yeah and he filmed this clip in a day like uh, uh you know jeremy 
I don't know if we mentioned this in the podcast. He's just had an extremely busy life. He just had twins and he's getting married. You know, he's starting up the family life. So uh, sometimes it can be a little more difficult to get out skating with him. So he actually filmed his two clips like in that same day within probably like an hour of each other, you know? Nice. He's that good though. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to bring that up too. I think, cause I thought it was, I wasn't, I honestly wasn't expecting clips from him, but I was really happy to see him in the video. So yeah, that was cool. And then yeah, it's, with Danny V, we talked about too, uh, you know, doing more of the, the Instagram thing. So that was a nice surprise. Those were both really good parts for, for what they were. So yeah. Yeah. For sure. And then Red had a trick in there. I think that's he did. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, he needed a red. Oh, trick, man. Yeah. I know he would have had dude, Red's pretty, pretty fucking good at snow skating. It's just that he tore his ACL in 2020, like not mm. maybe a few months after that, those clips. Okay. So he would have, I think he could have managed to get a couple more. There was like this 12 stair handrail that he really wanted to hit. And then he mm. tore his, his uh, ACL and had to get surgery. So he's been out of the game for a second. Otherwise, I think we could have expected some more red clips, but unfortunately that's, that's what happened there. I saw some clips of him riding at Josh's, like in his backyard. And I was like, Oh, like that's Dude. red, like doing really good front boards. I think yeah. it was in Sam, Sam Faber's video, but I was like surprised. I didn't even know like he was yeah. that good. So. He is. Yeah. I've, I've seen him like kickflip stairs. He's board so like that Munising rail that me and we used to skate all the time before it got yes. replaced. He is good. He just, uh, yeah. And he just got hurt. And those were like, that's like the first time I really seen him snow skate was in, was in Josh's backyard. Cause he, he got the surgery last March. So coming up on a year now, Wait, um, did he board slide the Munising 13? No, no, no. Oh, the, the, like, the, it's like it's like a it's like a longer five stair rail that you've okay, seen that rail. before. Okay, it's like okay. the one that Dan shoved fifty and yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. He's bored to that. So yeah, he gets down. It's just uh yeah, he's been hurt. Uh well, we have uh Nate next and a handful of other riders, but first let's drop for a zoom break. All right, we're back to keep talking about bleached. Um, Andrew, you wanted to talk about Red slash uh, Nicholas Olson's uh, clip. <laughs> yeah, I had the notes down the the uh, the no comply shove down the. Uh, I don't even know how big that set was, but I thought that was dope. I'd love to see more footage from him, and uh, you just got to give the filmers props. I, I like that. You know, gets a part in there. That's awesome. Totally. Oh yeah. And yeah, yeah, we, we call him red, but, um, his <laughs> name is Nicholas Olson and that's what it is in the video. So we did not clarify that before, but that's who red is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then moving on to, uh, Nate, AKA yeah. Nick or Nick, AKA Nate, actually. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> With that slam we were talking about earlier. In oh, the such a great intro. Clip. Yeah. That was a good, hopefully YouTube doesn't like take down the video for dangerous acts, which was what happened with bleach number one. That's what, what? TikTok's yeah, been this. doing that shit too. Oh yeah. TikTok is really, you get banned for, it's hard to not get banned. Dude, on that's TikTok, absurd. But, Dude, I got yeah, shadow I know, banned so, last week on like the sixth thing I posted and maybe that's what it was. TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. You can't, you can't do like, it, it's really hard to post on TikTok and not that's, get banned. That's just but reality of any kind of extreme wow. sport. Like I that's know, so right? absurd. So I had with, you, with YouTube on Bleach One, the video was like very popular and doing really well with the algorithm. And then they reached 213,000 views. And I don't, I don't know if like some someone reported it and I'm not sure what happened, but then it got like, you had to log in and sign in to show that you're 18 years old or over to watch it. So then it just like killed the whole, like everyone on the web, like if they got, went on the ambition homepage, they couldn't see it. Like it just, it stopped getting recommended in like the algorithm or recommended videos. And I think it's because Raph had one like fall in there, but I was like, and I had to like um, make a claim to YouTube and it took maybe two weeks for them to review it. Cause I was like, if this is like, if this is 18 plus, content than every single skate video and like <laughs> like it makes no sense like mm -hmm. this is as like you have to put it on every single other action sports video which is not the case so like i don't see why our video is getting flagged i don't know what happened there but then when i put when i put nate's fall i was like oh i hope we don't get it reported because that really kills the whole like you're like now bleach one isn't like 18 plus 
but clearly isn't coming up in any recommendations because it just stalled. Mm. So it's like, it's a bummer. And I was like concerned, but I was like, this is what, we, you know, that's what makes the video interesting. And I don't see why there's stuff way gnarlier that is not 18 plus. So fingers crossed Man. that this fall doesn't get the video uh, <laughs> shadow ban, whatever you yeah. call it. Yeah. It's so ridiculous. That's like, has to be a concern now with yeah. any kind of platform. It's like, that's just a part of anything. That's just real life. <laughs> yeah. TikTok, you gotta be real careful. Yeah, because they're like, the if you're Crazy. just holding like a beer, you're going to get, and if, you oh. get, if you, your video gets taken down, I think three times, then you're banned completely. Your account is shut down. Wow. So that's something to be like falls. You can't put falls on there. That's so over the top. Yeah. yeah that's pretty nuts. Wow. wow i had no idea but yeah so hopefully we don't get blocked but nate nate i think his part was really cool and it, it you know we got him on the flow team was that two seasons ago and he's like but we've been giving him boards for a long time now oh yeah i remember i met him Bar in 2000 was, yeah barb Gazi, like yep i met him in 2013 or something yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. but when he, when we officially like, because we had been giving him boards and whatnot, but we would, we, we made that flow team. It was like, yeah, let's put Nick on there. Uh, but he reached out and with the flow team, we did say like, oh, let's, you know, just try and make more like Instagram content and whatnot. We, we did like have him like be more focused on that because I do feel if it's just people filming with like random filmers, then it's like it doesn't really always benefit the video to have so much footage that's kind of like, but Nick was like, I really want to film it. Like, I'm not interested in doing, like, Instagram. And I'm like, well, you know, you can just go ahead and try. Like, in worst case, we can do your own little, you know, if we make your own part separate. Like, if it doesn't fit in the video. I just warned him. I was like, I'll tell you straight up. Like, I don't know if I'm going to use it. But, like, if that's what you want to do, go ahead. And in the back of my mind, I knew I was going to use it, but I wanted, I, I would rather like have him just know, like you might just make your own thing and put on YouTube and we'll help spread it. But he, like he's been sending, and even this year, like he just sends weight transfers every week of like footage, footage, footage. <laughs> and I was like, okay, like this guy is killing it. And uh, sometimes even he'd be like, oh, what do you think of the filming on this trick? I was like, I'm being like super harsh. Like, oh, we think we should. And he would go and redo the trick. Like, Dang. And go, like he really wow. wanted to be in the video and he worked hard. And like, and so in Bleach, the, his song is only like for pretty much has his part, you know, because it's the song is only for his footage, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I thought he killed it and he really put in work and uh, it's well deserved that he has like his middle part in there. So. Just yeah. wanted to highlight he's a hard worker and uh, always been hyped on the brand and really pushing to be a part. Like he he messaged me, he's like, This is the dream come true to be in the video, you know. Sick. So that's awesome. Yeah, I have a lot of respect for that dude. Also, really, I mean, I've only ever met him the one time, but awesome dude when I met him. Big fan yeah, of him. Sick. Just like I he would mesh with the team really well, just a really good spirit. And uh I really appreciated his uh he was pretty well rounded in his skating. I mean, there were some tricks in there that were uh like for me kind of Alan-esque when he did like that drop into quick front board on that electrical yeah. box. That was like my favorite trick in his part. I loved that. And he ollied into like that really steep roof, but yet he can be found hitting like that wooden double kink. And I'm like, mm. I, I'm a big fan of him. I think he's awesome. Yeah. The wooden double kink was pretty nutty. That and was the really slam was trick. needed. The slam is yeah. like a trick itself. So, you know, again, you can't edit around that just for the algorithm. Fuck. It's such a good clip. Mm. Yeah. That, that first slam, on the kink and then the one right after it on the pole jam takes yes. up the camera light. Did he ever land that? Because <laughs> I didn't see that clip again. And that looked like a really cool spot. Did look like a cool spot. I think that didn't work out just that fall. I don't know if that was like enough for him or even the filmer. But if you look, if, if you look at that clip again, like he hits the camera and then he falls down like a pretty big drop. Like, so <laughs> maybe that was the end of it, but yeah, I thought it was cool to start his segment with like that fall, but then add the other one because that other one too is like when you look at it, it's it's pretty crazy. He's like coming out of nowhere, kicks the camera, and then you just <laughs> see it, like he just disappears behind yeah. like a drop. And like, oh my gosh! <laughs> so yeah, well, and then yeah. follow followed it up with the the really good tray. The yeah, that, that was, was a really great. good three flip. That was wonderful. 
Yeah, like Zach said, I think he's so well-rounded. And uh, I also feel like, you know, wait, Zach, we are saying, has his own lane. I feel like Nick kind of has his own, too, in a way. Um, yeah, He I is agree. well-rounded and hits everything, but, you know, his footage kind of stands out. And I wouldn't be able to, like, pinpoint why, but I feel like he has his own thing going. And I was talking to Phil Moreau this morning, and he's like, oh, I – you know, he didn't even know the video was coming out, I think. And it just, you know, he's like, I, I had the perspective of like, just a snow skate fan, you know, like go on YouTube, like, oh, the video's out. And then <laughs> I hadn't seen the footage and then he just watched it. And he told me like, Nate's stuff was really sick. Because obviously when you've seen all the footage, it's always like good, but it's not the same reaction if you if you don't expect anything. You didn't, he didn't know mm. like all this stuff was in there. So he did point out Nate and then Eric he was... uh I'm talking about Eric right now, but Phil, like said, Eric, I didn't know had all these great clips and like, so it's cool. Sometimes, sometimes I, when I edit the videos, I export them and I try to, I try to like watch them, but from the perspective of someone else, I always do that. I'm like, okay, I'm going to be like, uh, I don't know. I'm going to be Zach right now <laughs> watching this video, but <laughs> it's cool to try and be like, how would someone else react and kind of, I think I'm able to do that and then be like, okay. So Phil had that first experience of not ha having never seen the footage. So yeah. Anyway. I want to mix. Oh, here oh, goes. Sorry. No, please go ahead. I'll go after. <laughs> I just want to say, I want to see more. I, I, I like mm -hmm. where he's going. The kind of the fast footwork he does on handrails. So I had the, he picked a really sketchy rail too, but uh, if you saw the little, the board there change is. up, he did, is that what you were going to talk about? No, I was going to say the phone's coming out and I'm hyped. Oh yeah. So he does this, he comes into the rail and then does a, a change up in it from the front to the backboard, which I thought was sick. And then kind of the same game where he, his ender, he came into that kind of hurricane and then pulled it all the way back. And then the free shove out, I thought like, I want to see more of that. That really stood out to me in terms of like what I've been seeing people do on rails. And I just thought that was, that was really sick. Yeah, I think that like uh, I'm not going to claim that hurricanes exist on a snow skate. I'm not going to claim they don't, but I thought that was a cool clip too. Very stylish if it doesn't exist. I'll just say that. I th it's almost like a fakey big spin at that point, which I'm sure Eric yeah. uh, loves. So um, I just wanted to, I wanted to point out, do you guys ever notice that he must snow skate in the worst conditions out of anyone? Oh, Maybe yeah. it's just where he lives. Yeah. Sloppy. Yeah. So the stuff he oh. does, maybe, I, I don't know if it's just like circumstantial, but the stuff he does given the conditions he's riding is riding in is like really amazing. Yeah. I think he just like, like I said, he's a hard worker and like, he's not going to, he's going to go anyway and try and get yeah. the clip. I and think I have so. Clips that I didn't use. Cause he got like even way more footage that's not in there, which when we release the B-sides, um, yes. you guys will get to watch. But there's one clip in particular where he does a uh, pressure flip, like kind of like the inward, but just like back foot. So the pressure flip, he already had one in that video with the fisheye. So I only used one That's of them. That's what that trick was. Yeah, mm -hmm. pressure flip. So I watched he it like, it he's, that's six his trick. times. I couldn't figure he's, it out. I didn't yeah. know what it was. Pressure that's flip. So he did another trick. one long lens, but literally like, it looks like it's raining and like he's <laughs> completely like drenched, but he oh. did it anyway. I'm like, I noticed it's like, he's riding always in the worst conditions. Like why does he like do that? But I don't know if he <laughs> just doesn't care. Or I think he just wants to get clips and probably when the filmer like is down. Yeah. Well, he, he lives oh, like around Boston, he's in, right? He's I said, I think he's New Hampshire. Hampshire. Oh wait, Hampshire, I thought he was like New Hampshire. I go oh, Boston. Boston. Okay. Yeah. That's they gotta not have it. Not I want to say, do they have a decent winter? Are they more uh, north than I am? I don't know. They get it's snow, but it, yeah, good. it's it doesn't stick around as long. Damn! Shouts out to him then, dedicated yeah. and yeah. down for the cause. One more trick I want to call out: um, that fifty-fifty shove off of that roof ledge thing. Yeah, That's a really cool trick. It's a big drop. There's a big drop. He did it super clean. Great trick. Allen spot to me, like Very a dugout ledge. I thought that yep. was cool. <laughs> yep. You know, speaking sometimes of footage that probably doesn't do justice, I think that's probably like bigger than Truly. people would think. I, if I remember correctly, at the start of the year, last year, we posted a few Instagram clips. He, I think he just like 50, like 50 did it. And, yep. dropped. and from that angle, you could tell like, oh, this is like pretty massive. And then the video... It still looked good, but I think that trick he went back to film it again because I think the first time they filmed it a bit close up and we just couldn't tell. I was like, that spot is so sick. Like you gotta get it 
maybe more like you know zoomed out so he went back and did it again damn but uh yeah i I bet that's no joke when you're standing there. I could tell, oh, but it, in the footage, it's, that's just how it is with footage. It always, always looks easier than, you know, what it truly is. And sometimes, you know, when you said that Ollie you did, Zach, and to, to heel flip, that's a clip I really love, but I would have never known that that Ollie was so hard. Like, I would just, uh, <laughs> I just thought, like, that's a cool spot. He did that, you know, quick trick. But with the footage, you wouldn't know. And then Eric right. was there, so he knows. That's really hard. But I think mm -hmm. most tricks... If you were there, you'd be surprised how much oh. harder it is than you think. But I think mm -hmm. that trick, that 50 shove is an amazing trick, probably even more than, you know, we can or most people can watch it and realize how hard that was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. So, I mean, after what does he end on? He ends on, yeah, the board slide. The board slide, yeah, it comes back around. The fence and then falls. I thought that yeah. was funny. <laughs> it's like the guy just like board slid at 18 or something. But then, I don't know, it's just like, it's just funny to me, like how much skill and balance you need to go down that rail, but then just fall, like jumping over a little fence. But yeah. <laughs> he's probably just so hyped and you kind of like, I don't know. I thought it was a cool end to it. Just fall. Yeah. It looks like his, uh, if you look closely, I can't, I don't know if this is true or not, if it was dirt, but it looked like his knee was bloody. Like he was I very wet and kind of red. Yeah. yeah. So he probably was falling a decent amount before he got that trick. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like blood at least. I don't know. I gotta, I'm pretty sure. I, know I gotta rewatch that. I was trying to see in the footage if there was like any falls or if, because I noticed, I was like, oh, there's blood on his knee. So like, <laughs> yeah. I don't well, know what happened. I couldn't tell he, from the rest of the footing. Say he skates in warm conditions. Could definitely be mud, too. Yeah. <laughs> it really looks like, you know, look look back at it. It looks like a bloody knee. I don't know. Okay. I definitely will. I'll check it out. I didn't yeah. realize that. You guys might pick up on more stuff than I do then. I thought I was pretty detail-oriented, but <laughs> I guess not. Yeah, I'm surprised you saw that, Eric. Not that you aren't detail oriented, but like I edited it and I watched the footage so many times that like even I like I picked that up, I think, near the end. So it's like it's something I'm surprised people were just watching it would realize. I was like, oh, is that blood on his knee? Like we'll never know. <laughs> yeah, I Easter egg. Closely, but I also, yeah, I watched it so many times. So maybe just as many times as you saw all that footage editing it, but yeah. I don't know. You were, you were just watching your own part, Eric. Don't lie. Yeah, yeah. Just, just looping it. Yeah. <laughs> that clip snuck in there you're like oops yeah. <laughs> all right did your footage start right after nick's at 420 yeah yep. see that's why we yeah, saw that that's it. why you saw that last that clip. was the, the 420 time stamp oh i'm so <laughs> stoked on that that was not Dang. on purpose what you said before blay but no i still love that that is my favorite factoid about this video <laughs> yeah you should smoke about that right now eric come on light up oh uh, no no can't do that man can't do <laughs> that. no you don't do that i'm just kidding <laughs> I think it's it's cool sometimes when that happens. Like, you know, it wasn't like intentional, but I think it's pretty funny. But it's just bringing me back. I know we're talking about bleach, but uh, when I made the ten video, it happened to be ten minutes, but it wasn't even like I didn't want to make it ten minutes exactly. Oh, really? Yeah, but then it just ho so happened to be like exactly ten. It was like ten minutes and <laughs> one second. I was like what so i took one <laughs> second out or something but yeah. it wasn't even intentional it was just like 10 for 10 years and it was like a month like a you know recap montage of the best of the first 10 years but i remember it wasn't even like intentional to be it just ended up being 10 minutes to the, like the second i think it was like i said a second more i was like okay we'll just make it <laughs> 10 minutes exactly that's so i don't crazy. know sometimes that stuff happens I've, I've i've edited a lot of skate videos too where Sometimes like stuff just works out and like, you're like, how did you do that? It's like, I didn't even, it just happened, you know, it just <laughs> happened. So then Eric's footage, I, th I think was really tight. And with the fake key, not wanna, I don't want to jump to the end. Or yeah. Like, Are we even going to talk about Eric's footage or should we just keep moving? Yeah. Zach's just going to hate on it. A little <laughs> <bit>. <laughs> I'm kidding. I got things to say. <laughs> I had two really good points thematically. Uh, that I really, I think Eric had the best song. I loved the the tempo change, kind of set the pace again, uh, and of course, like I just like that you know that that diversity in music really uh, helped again just shine a, shine a little brighter light on that part. 
uh, also made song. it. Uh, I did not pick that yeah, song, but I that was loved great. it. I was so stoked on it. <laughs> yeah, I was so nervous. stuck in my head. <laughs> that was stuck in my head <laughs> all day. I was like, I hope Eric doesn't like, because sometimes if someone picks your song and you hate it, I was like, oh, I hope Eric likes it. And even till this point, I was like, maybe he hates it and he's so dumb. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. No, and no, when I Eric was, was so saying stoked. I love it, it's like that song was sick, and I, I felt like, it, like I said, I explained earlier, kind of slowing it down, and I felt like Eric's footage too. There's some clips that I wanted to highlight and, you know, some parts were like no slow-mo at all, but I felt like your stuff, I wanted to highlight uh, some of the clips and I felt like a slower song was a good way to, to do that. So I'm glad you guys, if Eric likes it, then uh, whatever everyone else thinks, I don't mind. Yeah, <laughs> I was very stoked. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> no, it was a good call. Yeah, changed up the... Changed up the pace of the video. Definitely liked uh, how that set things up. Uh, first thing I had down was the big ollie on the sidewalk gap. Liked that. Longer that's than a, it looks. Yeah, that's a clip I wish we could have saw a different angle of because I know it was massive, but it, but it goes by so quickly. I would like to see more perspective on like that that spot in general or just the the landscape around it. Yeah, that was just kind of like a fun little night clip. Like it was just Alan and I out skating Powderhorn Park in Minneapolis. And it was just like, a, you know, just that little road thing. But it's like the whole park is a giant bowl. So you basically just start at the top. You get as much speed as you want. It's like, oh, just, you know, go and ollie that quick or whatever. So didn't have another camera or lights or whatever. But yeah, that was a fun little fun little trick. It looked long. Yeah. Did you have trouble clearing that? Uh, not really. Cause I mean, I was literally like bombing a whole hill to get to it, you know, <laughs> not really. Cause I'm the man, but yeah, for whatever. <laughs> no, it's much of a problem. Thankfully. <laughs> nice. Natural speed spots. Hell yeah. I wanted to also call Eric out. I think you and Zach, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Eric uses the oldest board in the video. <laughs> You might. Probably. Was it that Jensen? Uh, it's the Jensen. Uh, yeah. Sun. Mm-hmm. sun uh, the morning. The red and yep. Rising no. sun. Yeah. There no. you go. Yeah. I had an older board than that. What I one? had the Jensen. Was it the board pepper from, one. Um, whatever the sixteen model was. Sixteen. So the 17. peppers, right? Like, yeah. Or, or yep. you, yeah. You had that in there. What clip? Uh, the ledge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the concrete barrier. Oh, well, that's a good use for it then. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I keep a board eater spot for board or a board eater board board. <laughs> yeah. For board eater spots. You know what I'm trying yeah. to say? Um, so yeah, that board was absolutely destroyed after that session. As you can imagine, that thing is done. <laughs> so, so while we're on the topic of that trick, I want to call attention to it because that was actually one of my favorite tricks. Although in my head, I'm like, that's probably a really easy trick for you, but because I'm such a, such a spot oriented human i'm like that's such a cool spot like it's yeah. a barrier it doesn't look like it's ever been hit by a skateboard so it's probably just super chunky or at least just pure cement no wax and it looks like it's in the middle of the woods so i'm like what's that barrier doing in such an odd location you know it's not like in a in a downtown area so i don't know i really like it's that it's weird clip. because it actually kind of was it was actually really? like right off a side street and it was like going down into a parking lot it was just duluth like west duluth really close to damaged skate shop Okay. Um, and yeah, it was just like a couple blocks away from there, just down a hill. I felt like little sidewalk thing. So conditions were just terrible that day too. Yeah. Like, it looks yeah, like it. <laughs> um, but yeah, we just set up a little kicker and it happened to work, but yeah, you definitely had to like power through it. That concrete was, uh, it was not smooth and we did not do the rub brick thing. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I, rem- and- I remember, uh, Eric, when you sent those clips filmed by, by Stefan, you sent that front board shove and then, uh, the front shove you do after into that. I don't even like know truck cab is. yeah but oh, you send them you're like oh just you didn't seem too hype or maybe you were like not sure what i would think and then i said like dude this is exactly what we need like this is so <laughs> sick and like with the filming too and i thought like this is trendy like we need this stuff but you i remember when you send it you're like i don't know about this it's like dude this is good and there i think i think the filming really like also like he's a good filmer and you could tell yeah like, steven yeah, pestalozzi uh, great filmer yeah. great skater shout out to that dude when yep. you land that front board shove and then you just you just go out of frame like the board like it's i don't know i just thought that looked really cool like the way you ride away so i don't know that footage i i, I think is amazing so even if maybe it's not like the most complicated trick for you but like zach said the spots the spot is, is the spots are good and then the execution execution like we were saying but also yep. just like the filming was 
really interesting and it kind of changed up from whatever other filming you had in your part so i think it kind of mixed things up so yeah those yeah steven saved me especially on that uh that front board shove like i actually i did two of them and i didn't land either of them very good which is like partially why i was like doubtful when i sent them to you blay and thankfully you were stoked which i was stoked on but i was just like ah, i don't even think i can use these i don't know but then yeah steven saved me with the uh the filming you can't really tell it got a little bit sloppy (laughs) No, I'd say it was clean. Yeah. That's like when I think of your footage for whatever reason, I think of that front board shove. I don't know why. That's like the first <laughs> clip I think of. Mm. I like that trick. Oh, fun factoid on the topper thing too. We were landing in broken glass because it was like a junkyard. Because like that's <laughs> why that topper was there. Um, so once we got like kind of a hole, once we were, you know, done skating or whatever, and yeah, it was just a bunch of broken glass all over the snow. So that was yeah. Like, a little added <laughs> so <trick>. that's <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Alex. Yeah, I have a very fun fact, actually. I need to um <laughs> I was listening to your guys' podcast, the one that came out, the last one that came out. It was Oh, just, what did we get wrong? You didn't get any well, that's, that's <laughs> well, you're thought. second guessing my judgment. No, no, Sorry. no. Sorry. <laughs> so you guys were, I think Eric said is like, oh, it's sick because Gordo Head has a clip in the video. Mm. So I'm like <laughs> Oh no, like I forgot him. Like the day before release the video, I was like wh- listening to the podcast. I was driving. I was like, dude, I forgot. <laughs> him. And then Eric's like, yeah, I'll see one clip this year, but Blaze going to use it in Bleach. And I was like, no. oh no, where is that clip? So I, like, <laughs> I had filmed, honestly, like I'm like so busy. It's not even like it's insane right now. And like I, I filmed the whole weekend, I was driving back from filming. I, I edited it. I think it was like 11 or I called you at like 10 at night, Eric. Was yeah, like, it was late on Saturday footage? night. <laughs> I can't find it because I like, that clip he sent me. But then I was like, it's not in the, my uh, 2022 folder, but it's new footage. I had whatever mistaken or not mistaken. I put it in 2021. So I couldn't find it. It's like the video's coming out tomorrow morning. I got to film tomorrow. The boys are in town. It's like I got to make all these changes because I listened to the podcast, which is, oh. <laughs> but it was just like two details. Like, oh, I missed like two clips. Like, what? A, I'm blowing it. So I had yeah. to like modify the bit. Everything was exported, ready to go. I was like, I got to redo this whole thing. But That's funny. You listened and thank you for making that last minute change, Blake. <laughs> yeah, Dude, I would have that... been so bummed like if I had forgotten. So I have <laughs> a different angle on that story. So I'm t- I end up talking to Steven after that podcast comes out. And he's like, dude, I have a clip in the video. Like, that's awesome. And I had already seen the rough cut you sent me like three days before the release. And I was like, yo, uh, unfortunately, I don't think it made the cut. Like, I just, just want to let you know, like, I didn't see the clip in there. But, uh, you know, like. Oh, no, no. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, so I was like, yeah, I already saw it. And same with the uh, Eric's, like, uh tail press fakie thing like the blunt slide fakie i was like oh that didn't make the cut either okay but then the video comes out and i'm like oh it is in there and then i then i messaged steven back i was like never mind it made the cut dude i guess i was wrong <laughs> <laughs> thanks to you guys yeah <laughs> dude I, I was like oh no i gotta do this at tonight like i don't have time for this but I- <laughs> yeah, most of most authoritative podcast yeah. for a reason <laughs> oh, to our man. title Fuck yeah. going into that 180 uh switch crook whatever i thought that trick was so mm. sick and we've seen that before but for some reason i think i gotta take the phone out yes everyone <laughs> does it but then before they pop out they tap it a little bit it's like yeah you know the board always touches but you did it really good and i even like slow mo that because i wanted to like he's not touching at all and the pop out was <laughs> sick so yeah interesting uh obstacle to do that on and just such a cool trick that it, 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 you know when you look at it you think maybe it'd be like simple but it's not it's so hard to shift your weight oh like, yeah right front right side right. too yeah so yeah it's, very hard it's because like blunt slides are one thing but then when you have to like commit to going 180 and more like, moving yeah. your shoulders it's a yeah totally different ball game because yeah if you do that and then you miss the press then yeah you're gonna get smoked you know yeah <laughs> oh yeah like Def- the moment you go whichever trick the moment you go past that 90 like you know blunt slide if you if you keep it like five degrees less you know it's so easy but if you go <laughs> a little bit more then it like changes the whole pressure point or i don't know but it makes it so much harder so going to like switch crooks like that that's a really cool trick in the yeah I, not I to mention we could include it uh, it was filmed this season yeah yeah <laughs> yeah 
not yeah, save my footage. I just edit might, everything I got. I just send it to you, Blake. <laughs> might be the only thing that snuck in after the unofficial deadline. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. And like, see, that's why, you know, I was waiting for you to send that clip to put out Bleach, uh, the last episode. That's why it took so long. I was like, yeah, oh, I'm going to get something more. We need <laughs> that's that why. <laughs> I was actually going to ask you about the conditions on that day because it looked kind of miserable. <laughs> um, the 180 switch the, uh, thing? blunt side on the uh, on that power transformer. Uh, it actually wasn't that bad. So it was it was pretty cold and it just started snowing like right when I started trying the trick. Um, so it got that kind of fresh layover. So it looked like pretty slow, but it actually wasn't that bad. And I was able to like run in from a street too. So like running and like getting grip and speed wasn't too much of an issue. Yeah. Thankfully. So, Cause sometimes that fresh snow can be awful too. Yeah. Right. That was my very concern. slow. Um, before we move on from Eric's segment, I want to point out my favorite trick in your whole part. Well, maybe a tie uh, was the front shove that we talked about earlier onto like that truck cab, a wall ride thing, because I'm looking at the thing and immediately I think, how slick that is. I feel like it would just be so common to front shove onto that and just slip right to the bottom and not be able to really like ride out of it. Like just, you know, like a wall ride on a snow skate, there's no friction there. You can't wall ride like with wheels. So you're always just going to fall right to the bottom, like Primo style, if that makes sense. So I really wow. love, I, I think that is my favorite trick in your part. I don't know why I love that trick and it's a cool obstacle. Um, and plus I'm really fucking bad at front shove. So if someone can actually do it into something, that's like amazing to me. So I'm always really impressed with anyone who can put tricks behind them, like a varial heel or whatever. But yeah, the, I like that trick a lot. And I don't think we can move past this, uh, this part without mentioning a fakey big spin down a nine stair, which is oh. absurd because uh, if you've ever ridden a snow skate, you know, it's hard enough to ride one alone, let alone ride one fakey is what I'm getting at. It's, it's just crazy. <laughs> I, and I know you have that trick to an extent, Eric, and you're the, you're the first person I think of when I think about fakey tricks and I guess I expected you to probably do something faking this part, but I don't think I would have expected it down a nine stair, which is yeah. really big. <laughs> was it a downhill run up to that or how did it you was, manage to do that? it was downhill. So it was like only slightly downhill. So I still had to like run and throw down, but I was still able to keep my speed going into that set. Um, that 12 stair that I all on Instagram, like a week or two ago on the story or whatever, that's actually the same spot with the same speed. Um, so even just like running and throwing down, you could have enough speed to ollie a 12 or 13 stair or whatever. So that definitely made it easier. If it was like a flat nine, I don't think there's any way that would have happened. <laughs> um, yeah, the downhill run up definitely helped a lot. Do you I mean, try and use a bit like more snow on the run up? Like, do you use it, you know, you don't have it fully like packed down, right? Cause it else no. would be hard to turn. You need a little bit more snow. Is it, is that, is that it? Uh, no, I, I have very little snow on the run up, honestly, okay. because I'm going fakey. Um, and my, you know, I have to have the foot on the tail or the nose, I guess, depending on which direction you're thinking about it. If there's any extra snow, you kind of just bog and slow down, even though I'm trying to like stay on my back foot and keep the weight like in the center of the board. Um, okay. but thankfully it was like on a, like a cement walkway and we had the right amount of snow last year to where you could just kind of like skate over it. No problem. It was just like packed and pretty fast. Um, so I really didn't have to have that much extra snow or like actually make a run up. I could kind of just like throw down and it was quick enough to get there. Cool. So yeah. it's so confusing how you, you know, that's like, I don't even know how you can do down on the snow skate. Like I can do a <laughs> flag round, you know, but like doing down the stairs, I always think like there's like something that there's something that, you know, that you're not telling us. It's really not. And <laughs> Some things I was talking to Alan about this not that long ago because he was talking to me about half cabs because uh, he does those. And I'm like, I don't think I've ever done it like a, a true half cab on a snow skate. Like I do fakey big spins all the time, but it's like it's the same principle when you first like start snow skating, like shoving is easier than ollieing. You know, it's kind of the same way fakey, like the fakey big spin. You can kind of just like pop and jump on it and hope you land on it versus like the actual controlled like half cab. You know what I mean? Yeah. If that makes or a sense. fakey ollie would be so hard. Oh, that would be so much gnarlier than both right. of those. Absolutely. Right, I agree. That would be nuts. Oh, my God. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> there's a little bit of leeway in that regard. Yeah. But yeah, the hardest part is just riding fakey and getting there. Oh, you 100%. Get there and pop. Yeah, it's no problem. <laughs> well, <laughs> right landing, but, you know, landing and having, because you're twisting, mm -hmm. it's probably hard to stop that motion. Like when you do a... 360 to like it feels like you're you want to keep sliding I, I think with fakie big spin it's hard to land and not 
kind of start twisting, which I've never really, I've never done one like more than on flat, but. Yeah. I think in Eric's clip, you can kind of see that he grabs it and readjusts on the landing. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's yeah, a bad thing, but like kind of what you're saying, it's like, you're already pulling your body in this way that you almost have to readjust same. And I've seen Dan do it on the back three too. He'll back three and he'll start, he'll continue to keep moving because yeah. he's twisting and torquing so much. Yeah, I definitely had to like wiggle and adjust a little bit riding out, but it's kind of still the amazing of the spin trick, you know. Yeah. Snow skate history once again. Has That's been true. <laughs> yeah. So hard, Jesus. <laughs> Won't see me doing that. <laughs> Too hard. Who was right after Eric? Was it? Aiki? That was uh, Aki Helgeson. So Blay, you were trying to pull a fast one on me, I think. Um, you knew that I, uh, the blue, the Eki Haldor thing. And you're like, oh man, I'm going to mess this dude up. I'm going to put his footage right with up, Eki. He's like, <laughs> someone commented on no, YouTube okay. recently. Like, isn't his last name blank blank? <laughs> I forgot a yep. letter. That's not, it's not funny. I'm, I'm, I feel really Oh, bad. that. Okay. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Oh, wait, what were you? Oh, you're talking about something different. I, I made a typo in his name. Yeah. Miss the H. So, yeah, I missed the H. And it's like when I was doing the part, I was like, I'm going to go on Google and make sure because it's like it's a bit confusing to me, like a key Elgison. I don't know. Like, it's not even that hard to type. But for some reason, I was like, I don't want to I don't want to mess it up. It's like the only name, obviously, I, I looked up because the other ones I wouldn't mess up. So I went and Google typed. It. It's like, OK, I got it. This is what it is. You know, and then Eric's like, yo, Blay, I think you uh, <laughs> I think you made it. I was like, no, I did it. And I looked it up. I was like. I remember specifically looking to make sure I'm not making a mistake and I make one. So, you know, I, I was a bit rushed to making that video, but I hate when, you know, and it's like, well, it's too late. I'm not going to like delete it. You know, it's at this point. And I messaged Aki. He's like, oh, I didn't even, I didn't even notice. He, he's like, I didn't even notice. And it's like, oh, now I notice this, like whatever. But it still feel bad. Like typing yeah. his name wrong is not good. Sorry. <laughs> well on that note uh i had some stuff about his part i really liked it i had the uh he did the uh handrail like the the flush to the wall handrail yeah, yeah. the creeper never mm -hmm. see those on a stunt. i think maybe zach maybe 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 two or three times i've seen alan, those and i've done them alan, jensen's yeah, done them alan's done them i mean dave. i see i love dave's done amazing ones yeah i i, yeah. I seek out those spots i'm a huge fan of those so oh, shove on is sick. I don't think yeah. anyone's ever shoved onto a creeper though. Yeah. That was uh, Alan's done it. Oh, has he? A long time ago, he did one. I'm pr er, maybe I'm lying. I was thinking he did one in a throwaway part, but it might have just been a fifty that never got used. Yeah, I don't, I don't recall that, but yeah, so I think I made that up. Maybe the whiskey that thought I did. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> that clip was so sick though. That was, that was one of the tricks in the video that had me just like yelling at my TV, mm. like, "Oh my god, that is nuts!" Type of thing. Yeah, yeah, that might be an MBD. Never mind. I think you're right. And then well, we'll he has that back. 50 on the uh it's like a wooden, I don't know what it is. Super actually, wobbly. The sound is so that cool. that was my favorite because you could see the waves in it as he went down mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was yeah, a it's sick a, 50. Like a rough board timber uh handrail. That was sick. Now you should mention where is he uh skating? Where is he from? Iceland. Iceland, yeah. That's yeah. And awesome. then I, I purposely left a uh, when he lands, and then his filmer homie's like, blah, 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 blah. I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's yeah. funny. It kind of yeah. make reminding me of like when Tara said parts and he's like speaking Russian. I was like, I gotta yeah. leave. Yeah. This, like, <laughs> there you I gotta, go. <laughs> I gotta leave the filmer's thing. I don't know what, but I thought it was funny. No, I noticed <laughs> and appreciated that. That was yeah. a cool little I thought, sound bite yeah. to leave in. That was cool. Yeah. And then uh, I put Jalen right after just because, you know, he's good friends with Dave. And uh, I thought his trick was pretty cool. Jalen has so much potential. Oh, I've yeah. Seen his skateboarding. He is amazing. And we've even reposted this year on the Ambition account one clip of him snow skating, doing a kick. Mm -hmm. You can tell, like, he, he's got it. And Dave, Dave's always told me, like, if Jalen did it, he'd be so good. Yeah, but, I agree. You, know, you, can't, you can't force someone. I don't know. No, we did send him some grip though. After he posted that clip, I messaged him because I saw he didn't have like grip in it. I was pretty sure when the board is rotating, I was like, dude, do you have grip? He's like, no, I'm like, we will send you some because yeah. that dude would be really good if we got him out there. 
yeah, so having him transitioning into Dave's part, um, which obviously Dave, am I wrong? I think Dave had one year to film compared to everyone else because he had Sola Fide come out. Am I, yeah. am I making a mistake? Am no, I that's correct. Mistake? No, that's right. He only had a year. So he, and also usually, I would say usually Dave travels quite a bit to me or I go to him and whatnot. So he had to, we were lucky enough that Preston, which is a good friend of him, was willing to film and he's been getting into filming more the last few years. So it was really sick to have good Dave footage as always and very memorable tricks in there. And another quick, quick fun fact about that part is already he didn't have that many clips. But yeah, before talk. you get into that, I think we'll have to take a, a Zoom break here. And yeah, then we'll talk we got to say it when you get cut off. Cut off. <laughs> All right, we are back. Um, Blay, sorry to cut you off on behalf of Zoom. Keep going, please. Yeah, I was just saying, uh, you know, he, they've had really good clips, but they were, we didn't have like a ton of them. And uh, when we were editing the video, there was actually, I think, at least two of them that were lost because his hard drive had, like was broken or something. Oh, no. And he just sent me like, he's like, well, I have like on his phone just like a video of him filming the viewfinders like this is all i have i lost those clips and i was like dude <sighs> we gotta get those clips like we can't it's like i'm gonna put him i'm gonna put him in just with your viewfinder and camera if we have to probably with his like his dog barking in the back but like we gotta <laughs> use these clips but and i was like dude we just have to send it to like some kind of computer repair place or whatever because he thought i think it was actually on his old computer he's like the computer is fried i'm like dude the hard drive has got to be fine like we just need someone to so we were able to get these clips right before, just a little bit before making wow. that video. So I you remember the 180 nose press in Detroit, that clip. Oh, oh God, my favorite clip. Yeah. Yes, so that's like we needed that in. And then the out rail where he does front 50 at night, the one he front crooked skateboard. Yeah. Yep. So I was like, we need to have those clips, you know? Yeah. So I was really glad when we figured out how to get these clips back. So... Yeah, I think Dave Dave's section, you know, with that song, uh, he chose that song and it was really like slow. And it's like, I want it to, I want to emphasize every clip he got because they're all, they're all mind blowing every single one. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy with how that turned out. I think uh, obviously way less time was put than like doing the Sola Fide part, but still came through with like really, really good footage. So. Yeah. Yes, I was I was about to say the term quality over quantity, but honestly, Dave had a lot of footage for one year. And if you're a snow yes. skater, you know how hard it is to get. I mean, we used to always make videos in one year. I don't know how we did that anymore. It's so hard to make a part in a year. And for him to get over a minute of footage in one year is still incredible, let alone really good clips. Yeah, and winters are shorter, you know. They are. And now but... Kalamazoo, yeah. They don't really get winters anymore. I mean, you might get a... I mean, I bet he gets under 14 days of snow skating in a winter, I would say. Yeah. It's that bad down there. Um, for me, uh, just to kind of break up into, into shifts, if we all want to say our favorites, um, I loved Dave's uh, – op- or actually, I was going to say, it was opening on Instagram, but the blue flat down rail he does. It's that hand rail. It's a blue flat then down. It's like maybe his second or third to last clip. Um I love that because the day I met Dave when I was 17, we went to that spot in Grand Rapids. We looked at it and I know how little of run up there is for that. So a one push on a skateboard makes a little more sense. A one push on a snow skate seems impossible. So that is an incredible clip. It's really tall. That's amazing. And then again, we just kind of spoke about it. The, the, the press on Detroit heart press or manual pad, if you will, the black circle, that is such an amazing i'm not really a big press guy i even said this to him i'm like i I just i'm so far from them i'm not good at them so i can't understand them they're insane but that's my favorite clip in the whole the whole episode three is that 360 nose press it's so sick right never been done either yeah on a snowscape like i think he did one in like just a in the old street live video tripod and like on a sidewalk but just that trick is and I, I remember trying. We tried to film one for Sola Fide. It came so close, but it didn't work out. But that's so weird to switch press like that and keep oh yeah rotating and 
so yeah that that was uh it's like we had to get that footage from the computer that was fried you know yeah, yeah. and then i don't even have to speak on his last trick that's just yeah that's just madness. So I don't really have to say. I I, I tried a five zero a, a, a flat bar the other day and I couldn't do it. I missed like three times in a row. So I don't know. It wasn't I, like you know. It was a real it real was. tail press all the way back. Yeah. Combination of I mean, how technical do you have to be to ollie and get into that and hold Such it all the way down the rail? That little so margin precise. for error. Yeah. And then you multiply that with how high risk that is. If you lose your balance mm-hmm. or pop yeah. wrong or do the smallest thing wrong at any point, you're screwed. And he just did it perfect. And if you know that it rail, first try too. You see, yeah, he told yeah. me it was second try. No, I just, I just messaged second him, try? said it was second try. And he kind of slipped out on the first one and he said he did second try. I mean, it kind of has to be. I mean, that rail yeah, up then do it. I grew up. I lived right by that rail for years and I know how insane of a rail it is. It's a 12 stair, but it's longer than a 12 stair. Cause each stair is kind of long too. That is an insane tail press. I would say the best one in snow skating. I mean, he's done some other ones that he, he c- could compete against himself with, but that one might be the top. <laughs> I think it's the best one because maybe I'm missing one, but another one, the one he did really the good dream rail the dream rail. Yeah. But on that one, his board did come off his foot. Like for, you're you know, right. I mean, which That's what happens with amazing. that trick. But that one, it was the one he did in bleach. It was pressed all the way back, like no, no board wiggling or any, anything of that. Yeah, so totally I think agree. It's the best one that's been done. Agreed, yeah. fully. Yeah, amazing. Congrats, madman. I wanted to talk about the slam on the Smith going on the handrail. If, mm. um, I think that's worth mentioning um, for a number of reasons because I think we just all you know dave makes it just look so easy uh as you do when you're that good um (laughs) but yeah that that slam like i think that really in the part and i think it goes really well with the slower music too but just kind of reinforcing like this is hard like what what the level of stuff that he does and like you said with that 502 like the press you know there is not a lot of margin of error in those tricks no that rail is very steep i mean it's just pure impact yeah. it's like a thir- it's a 13 rail and it's just pure impact yeah we really wanted to show a fall because he had a few i think he landed a trick and then he wanted to do better and then he had a few falls i think like it came quick but then like it was a bit harder to redo it but like you said andrew i think it it was like, let's highlight that this isn't just like easy. You know, I think you can, yeah. you can fall pretty hard and yeah. So I, I think I it's mean, cool that we had one fall at least in there. Cause he's doing gnarly tricks. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. He's, he's human. Dave's one of the most amazing, amazing snow skaters of all time, in my opinion, but the dude works for his tricks. I'll, I will say that. And he'll slam hard too. Like he goes in, it doesn't come easy to anyone. I don't think. Yeah, he's willing to put in the work. Yep, he puts in the work for sure. That's a good way to put it. Preparing spots like oh yeah, very premeditated. Mm-hmm. Prim- uh, what's the word? Premeditative. Yeah, premeditated. He's, yeah, like yeah. he knows like where he's going. He's gonna prep it like the day before. Take out the salt. Like mm-hmm. there's oh yeah, a huge process behind all the tricks, and uh, I think that's why he's so successful. But also just like he wants it, you know, like he, he does wants it really bad, and then he visualizes it and he knows what he wants to do and i feel like he has the uh he's had the talent forever but he's just built the confidence more and more and more over the years even with skateboarding to do like big rails because he has the skill but then he just knows like i can do this and he also has this way of kind of working his way up to tricks you know this which not everyone can do like he's able to like hop on a rail and then a bit more a bit more it's like a progressive approach i feel to some stuff you just have to do it which he's able mm-hmm. to put himself he, in that mindset yeah but he can pull that off too yeah but like he's really able to like work his way up and then he's like okay i got this and then he just mm-hmm. does. very yeah. very impressive oh yeah yeah he puts in work man Live, living with him for like four years there he will put so he's he's the most dedicated snow skater snow skater i think i know honestly he puts in more effort, I think, m- making the spots happen than skating them at times. 
I would recommend to listeners too to go back and listen to his uh, yeah uh, last winter when we had him on. That's a great episode if you want to really uh, dig into how much prep and how uh, dedicated he is. That's a really great listen if you for sure. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I know we need to keep too. at the end. I had one question for Blay. Who is uh, the camera person saying "Wow, Dave" at the end of that? Who's I was voice? Alan filming. I Alan thought I knew it. Angle. It is. I knew it. Uh, there was like a, I don't know. You could feel like the hype was real, and I like this whole. Uh, after he lands all this conversation, I had to choose just a little bit of it, and I almost had a hard time because there's other bits that I thought were like really cool, um, but just having like you know Alan, which you know legend of snow skating you could feel in his voice like he is like truly impressed like so i thought it was sick to you know it's not just anybody it's alan who's like wow like mm. that was really really good so <laughs> there's other bits of conversation like i said maybe in the b-sides i'll have that in there but it, it was it was cool to have you know coming from alan so i wanted to mm. leave that in there and Alan had a sound bite at the very beginning too. Um, yeah. Beginning of your part, Zach, in the VHS clip. That was um. That was oh, Zach Dewicky. That was Zach. Yeah, I asked that at oh, the beginning really? too because I yeah I thought that too. I, I thought you were talking about a different portion. Okay, I'm I'm incorrect. I thought, I thought that was a different. I was going to ask mind. Blake because I wrote that in my notes. I thought if that was Alan in the beginning and Alan at the end, I was like, what kind of message are you sneaking in here? <laughs> <laughs> no. Easter egg. Al- Alan yeah. did say. He did at the opening of Dave's part, though. He says, first try, you got it. Mm, mm-hmm. Yes. And I thought that was cool to have, you know, the song was a bit slower and have like, you know, he's walking over the chain that's, that's it, you know, blocking the stairs. And he's like, first try, you got it. And I thought that was cool to have it in there. And then at the end, but no, there's no uh, premeditation. I just think it's, <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was sick to have, such a you know influential snow skater be so genuinely like impressed mm-hmm. because it was that good so right oh well done there's my notes <laughs> we got through it all dang got you got carpal all. tunnel writing that there's yeah. a lot of notes there here's my notes yeah, andrew got me beat <laughs> <laughs> all right zach you want to take it away with our uh, jeopardy segment Let's do this. Um, we know that some of us here have a strict schedule to adhere to. Um, so uh, I don't want to rush it by any means, but let's try to get through this semi quick just to kind of preface that. Um, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to get right into it, guys. Um, God, it sounds like host disabled my screen sharing. Can you please oh, allow? Shoot. Sorry. I'm just yeah. a poor peasant. Help me out, bro. Come on. <laughs> I can't find that in the Zoom settings. How to like. Change that by default. I'm amateur oh, over here. All right, I think good we're good. All right. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Don't be alarmed if a bunch of porn comes. Um, <laughs> I get this out of here. So now we're looking at something that's very relevant, but the toolbar is in the way, so I can't move it. Oh, there we go. Classic. Here we are, boys. Oh, um, and the do big... the, the URL disclaimer, too. Yeah. Um, If you want, right now, go ahead and uh, pause the video if you'd like. I'm going to, or we're going to post the link to this uh, Jeopardy board here. It's a public link. So if you want to do this on your own before you listen and get all the answers, go ahead and pause the video now, maybe play it, play the game, see how you do. Um, I know some of our listeners, we've gotten feedback where they love to do the do the trivia alongside of us and they've been keeping a running a running tally so yeah this could be fun for you if you don't want to you know just give away all the answers you can go ahead and visit the link in the description and play for yourself before we go ahead and go through it with each other so um without further ado here looks like eric's refreshing (laughs) freshening up his drink um but yeah let's get into it um i'm just gonna go for this episode the new jeopardy i mean this this is getting uh, pretty cool, guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and let's just go right down the line. We'll just, if you guys don't mind, if you don't hate me too much, we'll just go Eric, Andrew, Alex. So yeah, let's do it. I'm putting in your names here at the bottom. 
I am a fan of the uh, every question. I'm the fan of the trivia segment, and I gotta be honest, I'm like nervous for this. I was like, I don't know if I want to do it. Like Zach was like, you want to come on the podcast? I was like, I can't do it, man. I'm too nervous with this stuff. I thought you wanted to do the trivia. We were kind of like holding off for you to get on here because I was like, if anyone would appreciate it, it would be Blake. I love it doing it when like I don't know. I feel like I think with all the ones you've done, I've I haven't missed many. M- maybe yeah. if one, but I'm like I'm scared of blowing it tonight. It's like I'm on a roll, <laughs> boys. <laughs> well, I'll let's try just, my best. Yeah, you know we're all just having fun here. Some of these might be just so obscure. We can't expect everyone to know them. Um, but yeah, let's just get right into it so we can keep things moving. Eric, if you want to go first, how we're gonna do this is if. You just say, hey, this is what I want. You know, riders for 500, videos for 400. Um, just go ahead and pick one. We'll do it. And then we'll just keep things moving. So okay. Eric first, then Andy, then Blay. All right. Riders oh. for 100. All right. Straight up riders one right here. Yep. Let's get it. Uh, and I'm going to say all of them out loud because I know some people listen to the podcast and don't watch it. So, um, Zach, why don't you to... move your. Um, yeah, am your, I stupid? Uh, where is it? You got to change up your view the here. Grid view, maybe. Oh, perfect. Here we go. Yeah, now this won't be in the way. Thank you, Andrew. Um, so, yeah, first question right out the gate. Uh, this rider is credited as the first person to kick flip into a 50 on a handrail back in 2004. Uh, can we answer whenever, or is this Eric? Oh, oh sorry. This is only Eric. We could maybe oh. do a solo. Oh. Yeah, I yeah. We were, I thought we were doing all three. If he oh, doesn't get it. shoot. No, I was saying we'll just go down the line. And um, I figured because we don't really have a buzzer system, it'd be easier if someone just kind of has to, had their own designated question. Maybe we could do okay. it where if Eric misses it, we can yeah. go down the line and someone could steal it. Um, so we'd go to yeah. Andy next, then Blay if he doesn't get it. How about we do that? That's yeah. true. Sure. Second. Cool. Um, all right. Phil Smaji. Or sorry, who is Phil Smaji? <laughs> <laughs> he even does it correctly. That is correct. <laughs> Let me go ahead and make sure. There we go. Mr. Smudge. Yeah, apparently I put, I made this like over a month ago. So I'm, I don't know if I was acting up when I wrote it. We'll see. Apparently I put Mr. Smudge instead of Phil. That's uh, <laughs> let's keep it moving then. Let's... So I get to pick again? Uh, no, I thought we just keep going through. Sorry. Oh, just rotate. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I guess we are kind of um, deviating from standard Jeopardy. But no, that makes more I just want yeah, yeah. wanted everyone to get their chance and have fun. So, Definitely. Uh, Definitely. and yeah, so there could be some technique to this now that we know that yeah. um, if you want to go big or go home style, go ahead, you know, at your own yeah, risk. So sure. Andy, without uh, further ado again, go ahead, buddy. Let's do um, boards and graphics for five. There we go. Let's get it. I was gonna Sebastian. Do that. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, everyone maybe, I don't know. I, I don't even want to. I don't even want to preface any of these. Let's just get into it. Sebastian Rabin's 2005 premiere model featured a graphic of a bottle as they play on what beer company? Was it uh, PBR? Is that your final answer? Yeah, I'll go with that. I'm gonna say it's not. And if Blay, if you want to steal this, uh, I don't. I don't think I can steal this because I remember clearly that graphic. It was a yep. whiteboard. It was. Um, I just, I'm not much of a beer drinker. I think Eric is better with beer drinking. So he's. Yeah. Know, <laughs> That's why I stuck with. Like dubs. Is dubs like even a beer company? <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I've never even heard of it. And that's why it's like this is a 500 because yeah. it's an easy graphic to recognize. But what mm-hmm. beer would yeah. it be on was is the hard part of the question. So, I, Eric, I, do I, you I, have that? Is it Heineken? That is. That is. Let's go. It wow. is a green bottle. I thought it was pretty wow. iconic. So <laughs> go ahead. Right. Yeah. Eric just bam. All right. So uh we'll go to Blay now. Blay, what would you like? <clears throat> I'm gonna do I'm going for the big points. Uh, yeah. how about videos for five hundred? Oh yeah. this is the question I've been looking forward to for the whole whole segment. Oh, so no right away here we go what was the name of the final premiere full-length video that was never officially released Ah. i'll give you guys a hint it was filmed during the 06 07 season right after white contrast this is a really fucking hard question so i'm answering first Mm -hmm. i think it's that just happened oh my god i thought no one was getting this that's 100 percent it i got this easy damn well then now i'm like I'm like, Blaze not going to have that much trouble. And if that, that's the hardest question in here to me because it never even okay. came out. I'm impressed. Yeah, <laughs> I'm impressed. Bro, Real quick. Editing that, so. You're right. Yes. Eric or, or Andy, would you would you guys have known that? No. No, no. chance. 
Right. That's a hard one. Damn. Okay. Yes. All right, Eric. You need to feed me some more beer questions, man. Damn. <laughs> that might be the only one. <laughs> uh, let's, let's keep rolling the dice. Let's do Riders for 500. No, let's do Riders Part 2 for 500. All right. Let's get it. This premier writer, hailing from Vermont, went on to do stand-up comedy and can also be seen, seen hanging out with the Warble crew. Richie Bowen. Wow. Fuck, man. I thought that was also the hardest one. So that and that just happened. If Alan didn't talk to Richie Bowen, there was no chance I would get that. Mm-hmm. Right. Because that dude didn't get us a lot of shine. I was like a fan of him, but that is, I really wouldn't have thought any of you would have got that except for Alex once again. I've so. seen him do stand up. He came to Minneapolis and yeah, that's true. went out to see him. Actually, yeah, I think Eric went too. Yeah, wow. I wasn't able I was to go ready to jump in on the oh. counter answer and get Damn. That. I'm impressed, guys. I really am. I really thought people were going to start confusing that for uh for Bjorn just because he does stand up as well. Uh, so I'm kind of mad at Eric. Anyways, um <laughs> Andrew, go ahead. I want to get into Misk and let's go 500. All right, then. Starting with all the hard ones. Yeah, I like this one. So uh this now defunct printed snowscape magazine mainly featured by decking with some occasional single deck oh my god i see it on instagram and i can't remember i follow it oh my gosh it's it's uh fuck i know it i know it and i don't remember it though yeah i mean fuck. as far as i know it was kind of like when we were coming up one of the only yeah i, I don't think you have magazines. the right one in mind andy I don't even think you're thinking of the right one. Oh, yeah. You're, you're thinking of New Barn, but the answer yes. is Starfish. Yep. Oh, oh no. So, you no, just stole it from it. him. I wouldn't have got it. Okay. Like, All right. Like, I was going to oh, say. I mean, sorry. I, I remember that. No. I remember that because I follow. They actually have uh, a YouTube channel that I follow, too, Starfish Magazine. And they I have didn't like want to steal uh, the answer. Sorry. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, you're good. As long as that's Andy. Good. I wouldn't have gotten it. As long as he admits that he wouldn't have got it, then that's fair play. But yeah, let's try to keep it. <laughs> we are trying to keep it going but let's uh yeah make sure we get a final answer in there before we steal but yet again we're still good gave the points excited. to you alex Sorry, boys. all good oh, all good. good and you're right all right so we're back up to eric now uh let's do writers part two 400 yes sir okay this is i think a two-part answer so uh these two premier slash icon writers hail from british columbia and have shared parts and turn it out white contrast and let the dan fold and they shared parts literally in all three of these videos. Like they were combined in names. all three. Yep. We need two names for this one. Shoot. Well, Kaylin Weeb and. That's correct so far. I don't think I'm going to get that second one. Give me like 10 seconds. Turn That's it fine. out. Light contrast. Let the day unfold. Oh, let the day unfold was the first icon video. I haven't watched that for a while. Matt kept it under wraps for a while. Oh man, I don't think I'm gonna get it. I don't have they're it. they're always paired together because I think they were really good friends, but they're also lived in the same area, you know, kind of like how me and Dan would maybe be put together. It's very similar to that concept. I'm so sure, yeah, I'm sure I know the name. I just I can't come up with it. That's fine. If we're gonna pass then, uh Andrew, go ahead if you know him. It's is it his brother? Is it a different it's a it's a different weeb of wit or however you say it? I won't I won't provide I don't want to uh, give too much of a hint here. I won't. I won't get it then. I can't remember. Blay. Kyle P Pigeot or Pigo. Yeah, that's mm. correct. That, that, that is the answer. Weird, dude, they were, dude, so they were both really good too. Uh, yeah, they both had their strengths, but they were both awesome, man. Big yeah. fan of both of those guys. All right, we'll keep yeah. moving forward then. Um, so Andrew, your your selection. Let's go, uh, Riders for five. Okay. This premiere writer starred and edited premiere's full-length video, Turn It Out. Now, this is a really hard one. I will admit that. I'm trying. I mean, I that's the one premiere video I've seen the most. And if you're saying starred, I'm thinking maybe Isaac Hebert. That's maybe a good guess. But it, it, good part. It, it, he did have a part too, but it, it was not him. I'll pass it on then. To- yeah, Blay, if you can, this is a tough one, even maybe for you. Oh, I'm pretty sure I got it. Joel Maxi. Wow. Fuck. Yeah. I am impressed. He I thought no one was getting that one. He, also he did. Edited, yeah. 
there you go. I didn't know that. Now I'm learning something. Wow. Turn it out was like such a good video. And I, yes. I think it was one of the first ones that featured like a bunch of different, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna, I was hyped on that video. He Me too. It. I mean, comparing to the last, the previous premiere videos, which are a lot of the same snowboarder dudes and a lot of the same riding setups, turn it out was kind of like a step into street snow skating, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Joel Maxi was an amazing skateboarder too. So he can be I seen still, uh... skating in that video. I still have it on DVD. It came with my first premiere snow skate. Dude, <laughs> man, that was the first video I ever seen. Came with my first snow skate, and I won't get into it. But uh, let's just say that that video went into flames in Phil Smodgy's van. All right, um, <laughs> who are we on now? We're on we're on Alex, right? Sure, uh, we can I, do. I mean, yeah, if we I are. got If I got the point, is it my turn? Yes, it still yeah. is. Yes, because that was Andrew's uh, selection. And we, so. then we skip. Then we skip my turn earlier, but whatever. We did. Uh, I don't yeah, think. We, so. Yeah, yeah, we did. One, one I, I got know. that we, but it doesn't matter. My bad if I did. I mean, matter. Blaze's gonna win no matter what. So hey, I don't know. <laughs> riders four hundred. Okay. Who is credited with doing the first back three hundred and sixty on a snowscape? Are we going to argue on this one? Rico de Jardines. <laughs> this what you got? Yeah. Oh, I spelled his name wrong. Fuck. But yes, that's who I have. Yeah. I, I forgot the S in there. But I always figured he was the first, right? In white contrast. Yep. So yep, he was the first down like a... Uh, like a four, four. there. Yeah. Yep. That's what I always it's thought it was. And rotating. Like everyone yes. Else. Just like everyone else <laughs> does. Yes. As we discussed. All right, Eric. Go ahead. Uh, Riders part two for 300. All right. These two Canadian riders scored pro boards from Ambition in 2016. Need both again. Two part answer. Ah, uh, Jensen Fisker and Phil Moreau. It's big time. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Correct. Right, who is Jensen Fisker and Phil Moreau? Ah, he comes correct. Go ahead, Andrew, whenever you're ready. I'll go writers. Um, no, you know what? I'll do videos for a hundred. Okay. A really easy one. So I don't get blanked here. Sure. <laughs> what is the name of the snow skate documentary made by Logan triplet? Is that juxtapose? It is made by them. Um, that's the company who made it. I don't know. If we're, maybe we'll take a consensus here if we could accept that as an answer. The company that made it was Jux. Jux but it's the Jux doc. Is what you're it, yeah, everyone refers to it as the Jux documentary. So I want to say. Think? What am I thinking? What's but it does have an official title. Let me see if I can get it. Is it called like a day in the life or something like that? You're close. You're yeah. close in like the same type of feel of what you're saying. But it's not quite that. Uh, it's not. Uh, hold on. Fuck. I don't know. I can't remember. I, it's on the tip of my tongue. It is kind of a, a stranger name, I will say. I'll get a... Uh, God. God, I don't remember. I can't remember. I got it. Yeah. If we're playing Jeopardy Reels, I guess I got to be hard on you. I don't oh, know if no. I can take it. That's fine. That's fine. I'll get it. I'll it, gets get a pass, it gets passed on to Mr. Alexandra Blais. I think I think he should get the point because you think so? I mean, everyone refers to it as the Jux. It's the Jux doc. doc yeah. I know. I, day, I almost agree. every day is the name of it. Yes, mm -hmm. we're gonna give it to Andy. You did call oh. it the Jux doc, which is probably what ninety percent of people refer to it as. That's so. even like what came to my mind, like in yeah. the first seconds. Like, everyone just calls it that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it was around the same time because it was that somebody almost every day, and then let the day unfold, and then and true color, <laughs> and then we're all yeah, the same time. I know. All right. <laughs> That works. Alex, whenever you're ready. Uh, videos 400. What is the name of the first premiere video? God, I'm glad I didn't pick that one. It was Progression. <laughs> yes. Also, just a side note, I thought that video was extinct from YouTube, but I watched it two days ago. It's still, under, it's still there, but it's not under that name. What's it's just called like video? Snow Skate Video. It's under something <laughs> super dumb and generic and hard to find, but it does okay. exist on YouTube, so... At least it's archived. Um, yeah, Eric, whenever you're good. Uh, let's do Riders 300. Oh. Hailing from Alaska, this rider was pretty much the only known female snow skater for a long time. Who is Anastasia Lucan? Last part's I, wrong. 
but yeah, that's Anastasia, okay. Anastasia, yeah, I, I can't. Uh. That's okay. I, I guess I don't. I think that there's only one of those in snow skating. So <laughs> I, know I definitely think that's good Anastasia. enough. It's been a long Last time. name is, I think, Peterson, right? Yep. Peterson, yeah. Anastasia oh. Peterson. Also, I think she went by Anastasia. So I, okay. I think that might have been her full name. She went by both. I've seen it okay. in both forms. Okay. 100% still good. Okay. Andrew. See, we didn't skip. We didn't skip play, right? Oh yeah, he did. Nope. Okay. Oh, good. Let's go. We ever did. Let's go. Uh, misc for a hundred. Okay. This colorful snow skate event was organized by Bjorn, RG, and it was held in Whitefish, Montana. This one I got. I, I never got to make it to this, but I always wanted to. It's Yeti. Yes, yeah, dude, me too. This was the one event that I longed to go to as a child. Oh man, it looked so sick. I go to Whitefish because my brother's got friends out there, and I ask him about that, and like the locals like remember that, and I tell that's them awesome. about snow skating, and they still like know what that is, and I'm like, yeah, I know it, it like awesome. seemed like the capital of snow skating at that time. It, it just did. seemed like it brought out such a big gathering. I just yeah. can't believe snow skating could be like seen at that at that level i guess so yeah that was always huge yeah. to me growing shout up too. Out to, shout out to bjorn who hustled to make that work and like get sponsors and stuff right that cool. yeah that was a that was a big contest for the time even way cooler than x games which was you know going on at yeah, the yeah. same time too i thought yeti jam looked way cooler um anyways uh to keep things moving um this is uh yeah alex your turn okay I'm going to try the daunting misc section for 400 <laughs> points. I don't know. It seems <laughs> misc is like, I don't know. It I don't is a little scary. You know, you got to have one, though. I was like, man, got to put one in there. Some of these are just random. So oh, speaking of the word random, uh, what random candy company sponsored the 2008 Snow Skate X Games event? I got this. Wait, I got this. I love it this was, question. Uh, something heads. Wait, wait up. <laughs> Those super sour um, I love this. I'm so getting way stupid. too much that's enjoyment. So Warheads? Yes, dude, you're so right. Woo, yes, Warheads, comma, bro. You got me nervous <laughs> there. The I love that question. Coming for me. That question I was almost. Yep, I almost had that question uh, under a small, like a lower level for like 100, 200, and it was going to be what comp or it was going to be. Gushers, Gushers sponsored the 2008 Snow Games X Games true or false, and then I was like, ah, I just gotta go for the real. <laughs> but I thought they'd be very easy to mix up because they're like the same shape in terms of candy. Anyways, <laughs> all right, Eric, I'm sorry, keep going. Uh, let's do videos for 300, Mr. Trebek. Okay, yeah, shout out to the legend. I fucking love Jeopardy. Um, this 2007 independent full length out of the GTA area featured legends such as Jensen Fisker, Jamie Sapolsky, and Alex Vydrin. What is hit that thing? You got it. Hit that thing. Yes. I loved that video when Vydren, it came out. Vydrin, man. Video. So Dude, good. Dude, just He's so good. much potential and then never seen again. Dude, tray yeah. flipped, hard flipped to 10 stair. Come on. On a Front premiere. Side flips. Dude, switch heels down like a seven. He was ahead of his time. Yep. Gotta, yeah, gotta give props there. Um, but again, to keep things moving, Andrew. I'm gonna stay. Actually, let's do Riders 100. Okay, My, Riders Part Two 100. Here's a good one. I'm glad Alex didn't get. I'm, I'm super glad that Alex didn't get this one. And just to read it out loud, you're already laughing. But true or false, Matt plays Road for Ambition Snow Skates. That. Oh, is this a trick question though? Is I got a question. He didn't. No, he did not ride for ambition. I'm gonna say false. It's a trick question. No, it is a trick was question. It ambition apparel versus ambition snow skates. Did he actually well, ride for when oh, snow skates when were being had produced? Stuff. Because well, he luckily, did ride for the apparel company. You're right. He rode for the apparel company, which is what I meant by this question. But luckily, we have the owner here. So, was it called ambition snow skates in its heyday when he rode for him, or was it? ambition apparel I mean, only when the it started brand is the brand is just ambition but it was ambition snow skates apparel but i mean oh, man we're getting down could, to the you could i mean i don't know he did ride for ambition 
Yeah, that's honestly uh, what I meant by this question. I got to be honest. I definitely meant like, did he ever write for ambition? I think you were trying to trick someone no, because of good. the way the word. But we should no. get interpret it. it the I mean, other he was, way. he's right. Technically, Andy's right. You don't have. Yeah, to, it's it's a uh, not a big deal. I uh, yeah, I, knew, gonna, I like knew, and then I was like, I know this is a trick question, but don't I'm worry. gonna be a hard ass here and not give it no. to you because I definitely okay. meant that. Uh, yeah, he <laughs> definitely wrote for the company at one point. Just you know. In the first, like, true. three years, I think. I disagree. I'm going to have a word with the judges after this. Uh, <laughs> hey, Eric. What do you know, All Eric? Right. All right. Uh, it is Alex's turn. Bar Graphics 400. Oh, finally diving into this one. I was oh, so scared yeah. of picking that. Really? I just thought this would be, like, things that stuck out to people because it's an image, you uh, know? Maybe I was just big on graphics. But uh, this is <laughs> uh, such an easy question for the owner of the fucking company. Uh, what was... Gonna... I want to leave it for the other boys because this is just like, I don't think I should be answering that one. So I'll give it to, uh, I, I, I'm going to call it, let's call it, it was uh, the... Uh, Wait, let me let me read the Smodgy, question. The Smodgy. Oh, he's going to be an asshole. All right. So I'm going to read it first though so that so the listeners who aren't watching can see it. But the question is, what was the name of the first Ambition Snowscape model? And the hint is it was released in the winter of 2007, 2008, which actually we talked about a little earlier. Blaze uh, going to go ahead and uh, take the dive so it can be passed on to Eric. He said it was yeah. Phil Smodgy, which is incorrect, even though he knows that. Eric, <laughs> what was the name of the first model? Oh, I might get wrecked on this one. I know Revolution was 08, 09. Correct. Was, oh, man. I oh, I don't feel good about it. this. I think it's just the team model or the team series. But is that your final answer? I think it's going to be my final answer, and I don't feel great about it. Ah, but you should. Oh, it oh, is. Oh, it is the team board, board man. I was yep. doubting myself. Oh. It's all good. It's all good. Cool. All right, Eric. It is uh, also we, your I turn. Should have got that for a Zoom break. Real. Oh quick. shit! You right. My bad. Yep. We Most professional judge. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are freed from our Zoom limitations, and I believe it is my turn, correct? That's correct, Eric. All right, let's do, oh, boards or graphics or MISC. Let's do board slash graphics for 300. Okay. So prominent premier writer Isaac Hebert had multiple mm. graphics featuring what figure on the base? He was kind of known Ooh. for this. Uh, what is a car? That is not correct. We're going to pass it over to Andrew. Oh, I know what it is now. Good, Shoot. good, good answer, Shoot. honestly. And I see why you would think that, but that's, yeah, not correct. I Although Premier did have a lot of those. Damn it. Was it like a, a flame monster? I remember the. Gosh, one. you're close now. It's like, uh, I know the colors. I don't remember the, the, uh, the, what it was, but I'm going to say flame monster. Maybe. It's funny because that's probably what everyone thought it was, but that image actually was something, even though it was made of like flames. It actually is like made, it actually was put together to create this figure that you're referring to. Mm, oh, Chernabog. Uh, it's a, it's he a also had graphics. You, you, uh, there's also graphics after this where there was like a more clear image of what this figure was too. It's a Nazgul. <laughs> I don't know, Blay, what do you got? It's on to play now. You almost got me confused now, but uh -oh. I have two answers. Well, you better pick the right one. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you're... Because you don't get two. <laughs> Dang it. Because Bolt had fire on him. Ah, okay. Well, for the sake of saving time, I don't know. My first... My first answer was a samurai, but then I was like, uh, it... "Don't say anything more." <laughs> <laughs> that was that's what I was thinking about. But okay, we'll go with samurai. Yes. Yeah. Wait, what were you gonna say? What else though? He was saying like flame monster. I'm like, is that a dragon? And but I it made it. It was actually a samurai when the, like it just looked like shit. Yeah. I think. But then like, later on, yeah. he had a wave model, and then the next one after that was like a more clear image of a samurai. Right. So if I, I would have said like sword, would you have accepted that, Zach? And as a figure, I think I would have had to, yeah, because there were swords on both of them. Okay. And there, and the, and the, and the, and the sword was a really like big part of that. The second model he had with the samurai that was like the focal point. His name was literally on the sword. Yeah, so I remember. I that. think I would have gave that too, honestly. Okay. 
Okay. Um, that was Eric's question, right? Yep. Yes. Okay. We're on to Andrews then. Uh, let's go Misk 300. Yes. Okay. Oh, I love this one. What animal was the unofficial mascot of Extreme Grip? And I'll give you a hint. It was commonly seen on their stickers and their website. God, this is a great question. Was it? I was proud I wanna, of this one. I want to say like a polar bear. I, I can't remember. That's going to be my answer. I can't. I think it's a polar bear. I can't remember. It is a good guess given the circumstances of what we do. But uh, it's going to get moved over to Alex. I'm going to have to go with an octopus if that's the right translation. Uh, that's correct. It was an octopus. Yep. Chalk up some more for Blay. Hey, right now, sure just for why. those listening, this the current score is Alex is in the lead with 3,700. Eric uh, still maybe within reach with 2,400. And then Andy's at 200. So uh, we will keep moving. And it is also uh, Alex's turn. As if he needs more points. Mm, I'm going to go with the one. I will miss 200 just because that's probably the worst one that's left. I feel. Uh, Jordan Armstrong oh. created a foam grip company <laughs> under this name. Uh, well, it's FS Grip. Correct. I was referring to that earlier. Yes, we were too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought about this game too. Earlier in the podcast when we were talking about things, I kept thinking about how they might breach yeah. the territory of this jeopardy game or maybe ruin some things but uh eric go ahead whenever let's do videos for 200 cool what was the name of the first quebecers video shoot <laughs> dang it i, I know the last response. one i think i got it right on the last episode but the first one i don't have it i'm gonna say what is say bone but i don't think that's right what you already answered, dude? You gotta be fucking kidding me! All right, Andrew, because <laughs> you literally in the last episode I asked what I was the third it. video, and you said that. Oh, was it Andrew who got that last? I said time? it. I just enjoy the view. I think. Oh well, I, I remember it was Eric. I said, "What was the name of the last Quebecers video?" And Eric, Eric got, got it. it right. Last and Eric got it right. Got Andrew right. guessed enjoy the view. I don't know what the first the... one is, so I just said it again. I have no idea. <laughs> okay, so Andy, if you have an answer for this one, was it just called Quebecers? Oh God! It's uh, God. I'm gonna go I ahead got. and just say that was the name of the second one. I'll just go ahead okay. and put that out there. All right. No, I don't have the first one. Then I can't remember. Boy, right, I feel like you know Quebecer. this. That's the first <laughs> video I was in ever, so I know the name. Damn! It's go Tabarnak, ahead. which is a swear word in French. Oh, that Tabern- said, oh, may that's... I may I just say? It actually wasn't a Quebecers video. It was Evo. It was You're right. It was. It was and under Evo Films, but it was. Quebecers video was Quebecers, but it was. I mean, I, I understood what you meant. I would have said Tabarnak. Like, that's... Yeah. You're actually typically. Yeah. Technically, you are absolutely correct. It wasn't an Evo video. Fuck. I always just pair the three in my mind just Tabernacle, I mean, Quebecers, yeah, then Saban. They go together. And it's a whole. Together. Yeah. It's the same crew, but you are correct. It technically is. Wow. With that being said, man, maybe uh, we do have to give that to Andrew. I think we do. I think that's... Uh, I'm uh, taking that away from Blaine, giving it to Andrew. <laughs> um, that is my mistake. I apologize to everyone. Apparently, I know nothing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was Quebecers then, technically. Technically, Sorry, yes. Blaine. It's okay. It's my fault. I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was wrong. I'm glad he called me out. Um, we are on to... Uh, who are we on now? <laughs> Whose Who's question was that? It was Eric. So that was Eric. So we're on to you. Yes, correct. I'll do boards and graphics for a hundred. Okay. Here we go. So COSD, the plastic magician Charlo, was seen only riding this premier model before graduating onto ambition boards in 2009, 2010. Can we name that model? It was um it was a the plastic board. Are you talking about? Yep. Only seen, yeah. So that was the uh, it was like the team plastic series. I thought it was at one point called like a EG1 or something like that, or like uh, it had like a, a name, but it was just like the baseline ambition plastic video. It came in like blue, green, or red, I think. I I'm gonna know. throw you one hint it was a blue board that he was dedicated to writing. I think he was buying these things off eBay once they went out of production, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. I know the board, I don't know the name. Uh, are we going to pass over to Alex? 
Danger Girl. Correct. Premier's Danger Girl was the was the big board he was committed to. I was talking about that last week. You yeah. were. I've said I've heard you mention this board before, so I figured you would have had it in the bag. I thought it was a different model. That was my bad. <laughs> All okay. right, Alex. I'm gonna go riders for two hundred. Which are uh, regular riders? Okay, yeah. there's riders part one and two, just for the listeners. Uh, but under this <laughs> regular riders, <laughs> sorry, there's two rider segments. Uh, this ambition rider edited and starred in the first three ambition full length videos. Yo, Blay, you got this mm. one, man. Yeah, I don't think he's got it, dude. We haven't <laughs> even talked who about him today, I was have we? Back in the days. <laughs> <laughs> I almost want to leave it for someone. Like, it's just, it's nonsense for me to answer. Yeah, it'll be more fun if you want to go ahead and we can get it I'll say else. it was Alan Gerlach. Hell no. <laughs> Eric, do you know this one? Who is Nick Stefani? Big time. You've got it, buddy. All right. Thanks for throwing me a bone, boss lord. <laughs> <laughs> the one relating also- to the company is I'm a bit advantaged. Yeah, yeah. I should, yeah. I honestly didn't make this whole thing in mind with Alex being the guest, but then it kind of became abundantly clear that or, or that or that sorry that Alex would have the most fun doing it. So it was kind of like yes. we got to get him on for it. But I admit when I made it, I didn't think about you being the third guest, Alex. So mm-hmm. I uh, I apologize that some of these are definitely a bit easier for it you as regardless. they have to do with your company. But and he was right. gonna win no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> maybe and maybe so regardless if i put ambition questions in there or not but at the same time eric's been riding for this company for 11 years so i think that it's safe to say he should know some of these ambition questions too not that you've failed any all right eric and all right you, you got it go ahead uh riders part two sure thing uh who had the ender and ambitions full length let's play mm. i gotta think about this i haven't watched that video for a while it's not Alan. It was the first ambition video for a while that Alan did not have the ender in. Um, I'll say that's correct. Holy cow. I might get stumped on this one. Is it Dave? I'm going to say who is Dave. Correct. Okay. Yes. That was where Dave debuted with this, uh, his first ender, which uh, his ender was the five Oh on the dream rail, which we had actually mentioned earlier. Cool. There's your points. And we're on to Andrew. It looks like you have one selection since it's the last one left. Sure. Boards of graphics for 200. Yep. Here we go. Last question. Uh, what was the name of the gray plastic snowscape model released by Burton that had a rocking chair like base to it? <laughs> oh my gosh. Such an iconic snowscape. I, think I it's know the only it one of its too. kind. Yeah. There is. And there's a there's a guy who came to my snowscape comp. Which actually was funny because it's called MISC. It stands for Minnesota Independent Snowskate Competition. <laughs> yeah, I did that so on purpose. When I saw that category, I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> I don't, I honestly don't, remember. I know exactly what you're talking about. I oh, yeah. That, I don't think I ever bothered to learn the name of it because I was just like, <laughs> what a, what a joke. Yeah. And that's like, fair enough. I mean, every snow skater knows this model, but it's like, would you really actually know the, the actual name of it, you know? But my buddy Garrett McCall, he swears by it. He's like, he, he can do stuff on it. I don't know if you remember him, Eric. He was at that comp and he like, he made his I remember own. Remember somebody there riding, uh, yeah, yeah, that board. <laughs> it was crazy. Well, well Blay already well. won. So for the sake of him not answering it, Eric, do you want to take a stab at it? Sure. Uh, is it the junkyard? <laughs> no, you dumbass. All right, Blay, <laughs> what is. <laughs> Blay, go ahead and feed it to him. It's the approach. That's mm. correct. The approach. They did make a junkyard. Eric's not wrong. Yeah. I'm being harsh on him because I love him. <laughs> um, but yeah, they did make a, a, a snow skate called the junkyard, but that was an actual buy deck where the approach was a fully plastic model with, again, like a rocking chair looking base to it, you know, like just a complete rounded. It actually doesn't. The garbage. other thing, too, is it was doesn't really have a flat surface on the bottom. It doesn't. Kind of, so like when you ride it, there's it's yeah. it's so bizarre. I don't know it how is. to describe the it. The concept isn't bad like the idea is good it was just executed to make it cheap and that kind of made it and then slope deck is making like a similar but once again in my opinion is not executed right but like that concept does have some merit to it yeah Yeah. i see where they're coming from too but yeah well uh it was really fun i'm glad you guys enjoyed it yeah i'm glad we could uh, really good questions yeah that was super fun I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Yeah, I think I kind of already said it, but Alex is our winner tonight with 4,200 points. Um, but I, had, I had a lot of fun making it, so that's really what matters, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what it's all about. 
<laughs> and I'm excited <laughs> to switch up this format a little bit um, and get you as a, like, we'll have somebody else host for a little bit and get you answering questions, Zach. Please. I want to see how you'll do with some of these deep cuts. <laughs> yeah, well, someone needs to stump me, which I guess tonight I was proven wrong in a couple small places with technicalities and whatever else. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not all knowing, but please, I would love for, uh, well, Andrew's going to have a segment, right? about yeah, uh snow skaters and their in their day jobs i don't mean yeah. to spoil it but no that's uh what, something what if, i've been working on what if i wrote the questions because i feel like yes not really please. anyone is in good position to write them like whereas you know or at least as good this position as zach i think i could do a decent job of writing the questions you absolutely I agree. And please um please shout out to phil moreau this is the only overlords that we did not do listener questions for um, and I'm very <laughs> yeah. glad we did not do that because this is already what three hours of recording time or something mm-hmm. like that at this point. It would not have time for that. But no, Phil was like, Hey, I heard you recording tonight. I don't care. I'm going to send you questions anyway. <laughs> Phil is the best and he can do whatever he wants. Um, oh but I have gosh. a handful of questions that Phil sent me. And I, I don't think it. any of them yeah. overlapped. And I'm going to use those on you at some point, Zach. I'm just not sure what the format yes, is be, but I'm please. sitting on a handful. Uh, Even play if you want to send some additional questions over to for Zach. Uh, we'll figure out the hosting situation. And, yes, uh, yeah, please, guys. That'd be awesome. I would enjoy that thoroughly. <laughs> please do it. Awesome. Hey, thanks, guys. Had a good time. And Blay, uh, thank you so awesome. much for joining. Format. As yeah. always, heck of a lot of fun. Love doing the trivia. Thanks for joining us and helping break down Bleached. Um, Zach, Andrew, thank you as always. Anybody out there still listening after all this time? <laughs> shout out to you. Go Snow Skate. 